from all of the three moons beyond your wildest dreams. All right, we are live. So we've got our whole team here, the next stagers, and we are blessed to see what's uh, going to happen because Truth the Seeker got a and all its affiliates and, uh, are not responsible with, for right? any strange phenomena <laughs> that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, which may include yeah, the following just, heightened senses of awareness, psychic intro. abilities, know, UFO means. sightings, alien oh, contact, oh. time loss, out of body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition. Levitation, miraculous healings, and all remote viewing. Please be advised to listen at your own discretion. She's not a Christian! Give it up, y'all. Your portal to the paranormal, esoteric, and all things spiritual. She's tampering in and downside and stuff! And now, your host, Truth Seeker. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here. The next stage is live on the Truth Seeker podcast. What's up, everybody? Let's just do a quick, um, just not an intro, but a quick hello. Say your name. Starting up at the uh, top left on my screen with Karen. Introduce yourself right quick, Karen. Hey, I'm Karen. I'm with the Elastic Army Band, and I also uh, help uh, Gil and Adina with Kingdom Talks. <laughs> awesome. We yeah. so appreciate Karen yeah. in Berlin. <laughs> so I'm Gil Hodges from the Kingdom Talks Media and from Sacramento area. And I was going to introduce my wife, but I'm going to let her introduce herself when we get to it. And her. I'm Adina Hodges, and normally I would be right next to Gil, but we're countries apart. And so I'm in the country of Wales going to some meetings, but really happy to be here long distance. And Martin Smith with the Flying Penguins out of uh, Houston, Texas. I'm Berlin Newby. I'm a co-host on Kingdom Talks, and I also have a spirit-centered business podcast coming soon to the Kingdom Talks media channel. And Karina Pataki with Kingdom Reflections. Nashville. Nashville, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Tennessee. And Daniel. Hey, this is Daniel. I'm... uh... From Appleton, Wisconsin, it's interesting to hear that Adina is in Wales. I, I just got a, like a word of knowledge about, you know, you ask what, what's on the father's heart. I got a, a word of knowledge about somebody in Wales that's 42 wow. years old. Somebody who needed to accept their acceptance. Wow, wow, wow. Cool. I, I, I host Sozo Talk Radio, for those who don't know, sozotalkradio.com. Awesome. Write that down, Adina. <laughs> yeah, I'll, get, I'll try to get you a name too, Adina, because I, I have it. Awesome. That'd be good. Heck yeah. Well, wow. um, this is who we are. Together, we form the Brady Bunch, as you guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, the next stage, actually, Brady Bunch. The next day, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The next stagers. And so that's kind of a. Uh, a term that we've coined, um, not the new age, because that's kind of distinct, but the next stage that is the age to come. And so um, it's it's interesting, again, that we all bring something different to the table. We bring our piece of the puzzle. And as we, we show up, it formulates a picture. And, um, and it really um, is about showing up. 
and being authentic and who you are and how quirky or how different or how bizarre that may be or seem, you just show up. And we're in a, a group of people who uh, can safely and freely talk about our encounters, our experiences without someone calling the cops and admitting us to the hospital or something, right? <laughs> because, um, you know, and so for me, most of you guys know, like, I'm into the next stage of thing of what God is doing in, in the age to come. My biggest thing is is searching the scriptures and, and kind of revisiting the, the, the lost traditions of the Bible or our ancestors and what they had and kind of uh, incorporating, incorporating that into the lives of the believers now. But in the transition, there is the next stage is what the call that God has given us is to kind of go and see what the, the new things that the Lord is doing as well and implementing that. So we're in a good company of people um, with this next ages and, and shift and things like that. So if anybody, I mean, it's a good place to start. If anybody wants to talk about the next stage and, and, and well, we know what, Derek's what if, having a little bit of issue with his internet. So hopefully that'll pop back on here soon. But yeah, what, what, what are yeah, some of the things we that love the next Derek? And I, I got to apologize. Cause I think I really messed up his intro for his side. <laughs> Derek's platform, obviously for those of you who are watching, Derek, you're back on. You're, you're good? Yeah. I Carry so. on. You, you froze up there. Go well, ahead. I was just saying just uh, – no, it was just a good good way to transition into let somebody, you know, talk about what the next stage is and what are some of the, the things that set the ages apart, especially with the, the spiritual practice. Again, I, I love going back. I'm trying to – I'm trying to reincorporate the old the old ways, the ancient paths into what we're doing. But even <laughs> in the it. midst of that, there's some new things that are coming in, kind of bridging the old and the new together. So if anybody wants to kind of see what that I, looks I wonder like. If I, I wonder if I could chime in because I don't have much time uh, to share with you. Um, yeah. Are you getting my, Okay. So what I'd like to share with you is just about uh, that the Lord is leading me to to look at, really hard look at, what it means to live out of the tree of life versus the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And Gil, you were on my heart this morning, and the Lord even reminded me that this was going on and, and even even provided the, the time for me to be a part of this this morning. Um, cool. so, I'm glad you're here. So that's, that's what I'd like to go after, and I know that there's there's like lots of wisdom in this group about that. And just what the Lord's been showing me is that a freedom from judgment, because the tree of knowledge of good and evil is all about judgment mm -hmm. and it leads to death. Yeah. So somehow we've got to rise above all of that. We, get, we need to just live out of the life of Christ. And, oh, I'm just feeling the Holy Spirit right now as I say that. There's so much glory on that. Living out of, of so Christ, good. out of the life of Christ and calling others up, <clears throat> up to that out of whatever kind of sin mentality that's blocking them from experiencing the life of Christ themselves. So good, Daniel. Yeah, and I know you just have a little bit of time, so uh, whenever you want to pipe in before you go, please do. Okay. You know, uh, being analytical, I'm always, <laughs> I'm judging whether I'm in the tree of life or <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so here's my specific, the question that was rattling around and I've just been chewing on. Spiritual mapping because it's the definition of spiritual mapping is knowing the good and the evil, right? Where are the hot spots of evil? Where are the hot spots of good and doing that spiritual mapping? Yet everyone is into it thinking it's a tree of life moving into the next stage thing to do. I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, for me, you know, it's interesting you're saying this because I've been teaching on this. The problem with that is, <clears throat> is that instead of us looking to the blueprint that God's given us for a particular place or region, you know, we don't, we're looking at the devil. We're seeing what demon did what Come and on. what principality and what, what power. So because we don't really realize that we have power and authority in our mouth, right. what we're actually doing when we're speaking that is we're creating a house for that particular principality to come, come in. And on. It. So it's stronger now through our spiritual mapping and then we wonder why is the situation worse yeah. now than it was before where instead if we know who we are as matured sons we have a place and a position to be in the father to get the blueprint for that particular place or region and to release that blueprint and let me tell you something attached to that blueprint 
our angelic hosts. There's the powers of the Lord Jesus. Everything that God created that's attached to that blueprint, that will go fight on our behalf and establish the blueprint that comes out of the desire of uh, the Father's heart. So we don't, I personally don't think we need to do spiritual mapping because that brings us into warfare. And we're out of that season of warfare. So you know, right on with yeah, that. Yeah, I agree with yeah. you. And Dean, I think you were going to say something, weren't you? Well, just along the similar lines is it's where we're looking. And when we keep our focus on the blueprint of the Father, the, the yeah. blueprint down here below that the enemy has is irrelevant. And so it's, it's a joy to be able to step up beyond that and to see things from a totally different perspective. And, and I know we get a lot of emails and different things from different people, you know, about demons or getting this done or that done. And it's like, until people are willing to shift their mindset, we, we really can't help them because as long as you're focused in that place, you know, it's, there's not a lot we can do. Yeah, and whatever we look to, you know, becomes the source of our supply. Right. Yeah, it, you know, it grows bigger too. <laughs> absolutely, and right. That's right. what we're attracting, and it's growing bigger and bigger. So yeah, yeah. yeah. What you feed grows. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think that's what what Daniel is saying as well, and that I'm seeing that that's living from the tree of life. I mean, that's your you are giving life, focusing on life, and when life comes in, death, which is already defeated, as we know. Yeah. Come on. cannot stay and it it leaves and flees as well and so exactly. i think it's focusing in that space is just so massive. good it transforms that's what transforms is when we're in the fight it doesn't transform it just it breaks free from some things but deliverance happens in the midst of the tree of life as almost a byproduct is what yeah. what i'm finding i think you guys are the same yeah so good it's funny funny you say that because like we're talking about uh, mapping or, or, or like a blueprint even. I have a blueprint for spiritual warfare. It's very simple, but each one is kind of uh, intricate and detailed all, all in its own. James 4, 7 is my blueprint. And and there's a step and there's orders and a, and a process there. Number one is submit yourselves to God. Mm -hmm. Resist the devil. And three, he will flee. It's, it's interesting the way you guys are presenting this is that maybe some people think that it's the other way around first of mm -hmm. all resist the devil secondly submit to god but it's the other way around right. submit yourselves to god to make sure that every area of your life you're submitted to god in your mind and your thought process your your relationships your business you know what i'm saying in the scriptures give us details on how we can be submitted to god in, in all of these areas but that's it Ask the father, one of the pl plumb lines, you know, it, uh, examining yourself to make sure that you're in the tree of life and you're operating out of that. And all of the other stuff, like Jesus says in Matthew, is going to it's going to be given unto you. All of the things that you need supernaturally, right. the blessings, the finances, <laughs> uh, the spiritual victories over those principalities and powers and demons, it's going to be added unto you as long as you are, number one, submitted to God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so good. Mm -hmm. Really, really good. A, a big part of what we're stepping into is we have to live from that place of relationship and of, of asking father in everything, because as we look at spiritual practice, if we're not careful, it just becomes, you know, the, the new becomes the old and we get formatted and well, this is the way to do it, or that's the way to do it. But living from the tree of life, it's a constant adventure. We did it this way yesterday, but today father may have a new way of doing it and keeping, our, our mind open and continually having that relationship with father so that we can move and transition quickly that we don't make the new, mm -hmm. you know, an idol. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. so like following the father, that's interesting. You say that because like, even with the name of giving myself truth seekers, like you can find, you know, you're supposed to have found the truth, but the truth is something that we're continually following Goodbye. and Absolutely. it kind of, you know what I'm saying? Mirror images, the Israelites in the desert following the father. Now, if they made camp in this area for so long, the father's moving. You got to mm -hmm. follow me. I'm teaching you Absolutely. to follow me. Right. Right. Yeah, that's good. Good. Yeah. I got a um, PS on um, on all of this, and the number one key is uh, really spending time. I, I hear a lot of time. I just don't have time to spend hours. Okay, well, <laughs> you have to spend out. You have to spend the time, so you get that relationship going, that intimate place with him, and then you're able to 
see your scroll and develop, you know, who you are in Christ, your own identity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you don't not bit, have time. Yeah. But, <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> the cool thing about time is, you know, as we go on this journey to understand that time is not linear and static, like we have thought. Yeah. But as we uh, build that relationship with time, um, it expands. Absolutely. And, and so that's, that's the joy of this is, you know, if, if we get into an old rut, well, I've got to spend this amount of time every day or I'm not, you know, but it's like, okay, as I, as I make friends with time and build that relationship, it expands and the, the timing will open up more and more for us. Yeah. It's, it's interesting too, because like, I know you guys have seen this of like maybe having a spiritual father or being discipled by older people in the faith who are really good and really knowledgeable. And it's taken them not years, it's taken them a lifetime to really get this wisdom. But for the, the people who are coming up under them, there's like an acceleration in that process yeah. where things that took them 20 years to grasp, it may take us six months to grasp and we begin to get this information and we accelerate and then we uh, raise people up under us, which the same things we get all the good stuff and, and they learn and we just pass it down almost like it's a spiritual DNA of like the, you know what I'm saying? A family tree. We have a spiritual family tree and, the, and they get it a lot faster. So things, so just as the scripture says, a day is like a thousand years. Time is really weird in the kingdom. So you just have to make that time because when you tap in, even if it's only for a few minutes, the way God has a, a way of giving you those downloads, he may even start it in the secret place and continue to give you the revelation throughout the day on the job site, in your relationships with your wives and, and spouses or watching television. You started it in the secret place, and now God is continuing to give you the re re revelation as you're watching your favorite TV show with your family. Like, that's how this works, right? Um, I, I might just uh, pop in for a minute here. Just uh, I've got to get going here in one minute. So I, I just want to say I love you all. I love all who are watching. Uh, Father loves you. Um, I just wanted to encourage you, too, that uh, what I've what I've what I've come into over the last few months is something amazing. And it's going to make some people feel like they're crazy when they experience it. And I just want you to know you're not alone of just like the father is, is tapping into like your kindred spirit tribe, saints and angels uh, in the kingdom of heaven that we get to commune with, that they're coaching us and guiding us and nurturing us. And that when we speak in tongues, we're communicating with them and they're communicating with and, and through us to others. And this is where they're going to pour in so much wisdom and help into our lives if we allow it. And uh, so you guys can, if you choose to, you can take that and run with it if you want. But I, I just want to bless you all <clears throat> this time. I love you all. Thanks for showing up. Love bro. you, Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks for coming Thanks, on, brother. <laughs> Glad you can make it for a little bit. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> all right. Take care. Hey, bye bye. 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 So now if we could just get the uh, the uh, Michael Basham to get on here. <laughs> you missed the last well, one. You missed this one. I know. On his behalf, it is crazy early in Hawaii it right is. now. It is. It is. So so um, we had talked about, you know, and Derek, you already kind of pushed into this a little bit, but what are some of the other things that we think, you know, that we sense in the spirit that's resonating in our spirit that, are going to be part of the age to come. Uh, and I do just want to say that I believe that we are the transitionaries. And so uh, there may be things that are part of the transition, but may not necessarily be part of the next stage, you know, in its fullness, you know, there's going to be some transition time, but what are some of those things you think that are going to just pass over and be solid in this age to come? I believe personally, it's going to be us transfiguring and becoming just like Christ. Yeah. You know, I know we're, we're, we've been hearing it. It's in the Bible, you know, that it says, if any man be in Christ, then he becomes a new creation or a new creature. We're supposed to be Jesus with skin on, not just uh, as a figure of speech, like right. literally, literally yeah. reflect who he is <clears throat> so that uh, the governments of this, you know, the, the kingdoms of this government will become the kingdoms of our God. And not only here on the earth, but I believe in 
every part of his creation. I believe, you know, the next age, the age to come is us transforming. We must transform in order to release what the father wants to release on the earth and in all of creation. And I believe that's part of the maturity of the sons. That's why God has taken us through maturity process, you know, so yeah. that we can walk in the fullness of that, not just Absolutely. talk about it, but actually, which means not dying, which means, uh, you know, regenerating our DNA. It means all of that to actually tap into, um, you know, the, the, right. the supernatural life, resurrection power, resurrection life. Now we don't have to die. Right. That's, that's part of the curse. We do not have to die. Come on. So, so that's, I believe that that's a huge thing that God is wanting us to transition into. We must begin to live our present out of our future. Amen. Live our present out of the age to come. So with that, I'm going to actually run over to Martin because Martin, you, uh, you already kind of brought this question up. And I think this really dovetails right into that. So once you ask your question and, and say what you want to say on that piece, because it's a good, good question. <laughs> yeah, I think, I mean, part of that was the discussion with Mike Parsons that, that you guys had. And, and it is exactly that question. Do we, do we have to physically die? And that's something I've always assumed. Yes, because everybody that I know has died, uh, you know, between 70 and 100 years old. And I always assumed, right, that our the human lifespan was limited to 120 years because, by golly, that's what the Bible says, right? But when, as I've started investigating, and to be honest, my son, 17-year-old son is convinced, you know, he's not. And, and I've had, he's forced me to really wrestle with it. But when you look at Genesis 6, the 120 year lifespan is, was from, you know, the time that, that God gave Noah the command mm -hmm. to then build the ark and then get into the ark was 120 years because then later Abraham lived 175 years yeah. way after the ark. Yeah. So then that would mean if we stuck to the 120, then God wasn't accurate. He, he misspoke, which is, we know doesn't happen. Right. So, yeah. That was a, a biblical breakthrough for me. And then as we look at everything Jesus talked about was mm -hmm. death and eternal life. And then if we look into first, first Corinthians 15, the latter half of that, you know, I was talking through some of the youth uh, on Saturday night and one of them, you know, just said, well, it sounds like this is a choice, like that we have a choice to live or to die. And it was like, you you're right on let, let me yeah, let yeah. me play the devil's advocate though let me Do play what? the devil's advocate in that you know we've seen in all the movies and stuff right of like this person who drinks the elixir for everlasting life and they get to remain healthy young and vibrant and they live for ages and eons but they've seen their families grow old and wither right. away and their friends and they're still good but they've had to like say goodbye to their lovers and and who grow yeah. old and weary that that would be a fear <laughs> of living and do forever it over and over and over exactly. again. Oh. Like Wolverine, man. He's, yeah. That's he's, why exactly I think it's a choice. I, I do. I think it's a choice. And, you know, <clears throat> when you look just at John six, starting with verse uh, 49 and down, when Jesus talks about him being the breath of uh, the bread uh, of life, I mean, Jesus says nine times, nine times, you know, and nine is uh, birthing. Mm -hmm. Every time you, you read the Bible, you know, uh, um, numerical things, it's God's trying to say something. He said, your fathers ate manna in the desert, yet they died. So here's manna, a supernatural substance that came from the hand of God, and yet they died. And then Jesus says, but I am the bread of life. He who eats of my flesh and drinks of my blood shall never die. Now, it's not salvation based, you know, from right. what I feel. It's, it has to do physical death. So I do believe it's a choice. It's yeah. a, just like you said, Derek, you know, it's kind of <clears throat> like, oh, I don't know if I want to do that because I don't know if I want to see my loved ones die. And I, I, I totally I totally get that. And, and yet I, I do believe that if we fully are engaged with our, our mandate and our scroll and our blueprint and we know who we are and what we have to do, number one, I feel like. Uh, and this is me personally, but I feel like I would have a, a, a heavenly perspective an eternal perspective. Yeah. And I would understand that even though they did not make the choice or weren't able to make the choice to live as long that I will see them again. So, you Absolutely. know, yeah. Is it going to be hard losing people? Absolutely. But there's going to be a passion and a fulfillment in my heart and yeah. in my spirit and in my scroll 
to carry on to do what I've been called to do because I'm working as a son of God, mm -hmm. as a mature son. I'm working in that aspect to accomplish whatever it is Father has given to me. And for me, I believe that is going to supersede, uh, you know, that choice to die with my family or to die with my my, my friends. And 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 yet again, you know, we haven't talked about this. We haven't brought it up. But you know, if, if you're looking at the restoration of all things then, you know, eventually we know that we're going to see those people again, um, you know, one way or another. So anyway, that's just one thing I'd throw out there. That That's deep because like you would have to really to to really not be moved by the flesh, but be moved by the spirit and compassion with that to get an understanding. You have to see through the eyes of the father because literally he's been yeah. doing that. Jesus yeah. has popped in and out of every age every eon of like just coming here dealing with humanity showing up hey i'm with you in the fire hey i'm here i'm the angel of the lord and god just watching us be born do our thing and then that generation die off so he's literally had to watch generations of people come and go and come and go and then physically take on a body and come down here so it's like he almost like chose to like you know what i want to i want to know what it feels like to be yeah, one of you and I want to feel, mm -hmm. see yeah. what it feels like to have my body ripped and torn and give up the ghost and go mm -hmm. through it with you to show you that we've overcome to show That's you what, what everlasting life really is. So in order to walk in that, you would literally have to say, okay, God show me how you see humanity. And in that, I mean, that's there's layers and layers and layers of a spiritual encounter of when God opens up your eyes, because that's what he that's what the Bible and all this stuff is about is about. Look, tell them I love them. How how do you learn that? Well, first, you learn by reading the scriptures, but, you know, because there's a supernatural uh, uh, transference of God's love, which is the Holy Spirit. And we have his compassion for the world. We have his empathy uh, for the dying, for the lost, for the drug. And we feel how he feels for those who are dying. And literally it's a transference. So we'd be able to feel that as well. Yeah. I think that's good. And also like what Gil was saying is if you're into your assignment, you might have a hundred, 200 year mandate, Sure, you know, that it will take that long. So I guess if you're into that and you know that, you know, it's all part of the plan, I guess, you know, that would make it so much easier. I think what, what we were touching on about going, having the heavenly perspective is, is absolutely critical because you know, my wife and I are having this conversation just two days ago that, you know, when I look from an earthly perspective, you know, I have limited blessings, limited resources, and there are certain things that I would say, you know, I'll never get over those things, right? I mean, certain pains, certain hurts that from a physical human perspective, we, we may have said, we'll never get over that hurt or that whatever. And it requires us to go into the heavens. And if we look at Ephesians one, right, it says that every spiritual blessing has been given to us in the heavenlies. So in order to get those, we need to go into the heavenlies mm -hmm. and we're transitioning out of the belief that, well, we used to, we, we had to die to go get those, right? Cause that's the only way we could go to heaven. Now we're realizing as sons and because of what Jesus did, we have full access now. And so I've got to go get the heavenly perspective, which then just it saturates our life with with life and regeneration so that suddenly not only healing and those things become possible, but now eternal life physical becomes possible as well. Whereas before, from an earthly perspective, there is no chance whatsoever, but yeah. now it, it makes those things possible. And like you're saying, Gil, it, it changes our whole premise and perspective and we all have different assignments and things that we'll go after. Yeah. yeah. It's so true because the scripture says that eternal life is to know Yeshua period. Uh, and right. so we're already eternal beings and it's, it's that mind shift mm -hmm. where as we pursue this, the heavenly realm becomes more real to us than this earthly realm. And it, and through the ages, however long, you know, we, we get to know the great cloud of witnesses and they're not dying. And so we have all of these friends and companions and angels and, you know, the whole family in heaven to participate in uh, our assignment in the earth. And so I, it's a joy that I look forward to, to mm -hmm. continue this life and to not choose that death. Yeah. It is so important for us to learn, you know, as, 
the language that Mike Parsons uses is that we deconstruct our earthly and our natural perspective, that we deconstruct that because, uh, you know, for years I've used the term, you know, life is, is, is a character building experience. And when we have a heavenly perspective, we can look at every instance that comes our way, even death and even some of the most tragic things that come our way that we can look at it, you know, from a heavenly perspective and understand this is something I'm yeah. called to go through in order to grow and to go to the next stage, but that it's, it's all part of my growth in becoming a mature son. Mm-hmm. Again, like this is what I do on the podcast. I ask questions, even if I don't believe it. So don't let me present this question and think that I agree or believe with this. But what if there's a lot of what if this is how we just, you know, uh, engage conversation. Right. And shout out to Chris Garner, because I was just thinking about this song. He posted, we are eternal and all uh, come pain on. is an illusion. <laughs> that song is amazing. That song is, is so, is so hey, powerful. Hey, Derek. You, you broke up. You just mentioned the guy's name and you broke up there. So start from there and, and keep going. Okay. Yeah. Chris Garner says, uh, we are eternal. All this pain is an illusion. It's a song by tool, which is a whole, the song is about us being etheric spirit beings and like choosing to come to earth and have this encounter and, and kind of sign on for this earth is almost like a, like a training ground or a teaching place to see where we will spend eternity or whatever. But the question I wanted to pose on this eternal life, and I'm just going to say this across the board, I don't really believe in, in, in this, the way the new age teaches it. And I, I really think it's dangerous the way they teach it. And I'm going to show, I have a, I'm working on a teaching to show you the dangers of it, but it is the subject of reincarnation. So some people may see what we're talking about, this eternal life or, you know, not your soul, not being destroyed would be like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Your body is going to wither. Your body returns to the earth, but the spirit or soul gets to come back through another person. I don't necessarily believe that there's some interesting scriptures about the spirit of Elijah has come and, and, and they were looking for it. So there was this belief that they believed in something familiar. Maybe that was only a couple of the super prophets or something like that, that they <coughs> believe that happened. Or if everyone reincarnated, there's a lot of problems. There's a lot of dangers in teaching reincarnation. But let yeah. me just throw that out there to you guys. Mm-hmm. What if this eternal life was the fact that you either reincarnate as another person, which I don't like that. I'm more into the tune of you get to come back and, and teach and you get to be like Moses and Elijah and meeting and training and, and meeting with the believers. Maybe that makes more sense, but let me just throw that out there and see. And what so before does. anybody else answers that, I, I just want to throw out too, that again, this is one of those questions that in the past as, as Christians in the box would have just, we, all of our walls would have gone up and we would have just said absolutely no way. So I just want to say, let heaven begin to reveal to you what is the truth. And I don't have an answer on this. I, I've got thoughts, but I don't have a, a What are your thoughts, answer. Gil? <laughs> I, I'll, I'll let some others speak on it first. <laughs> okay. Come Everybody on. Silent. <laughs> Come on now. No one wants to touch it, huh? Karina? Well, you know, I do also have some thoughts on it. This is where i'm at you guys because before we came on the air we kind of discussed you know what are we going to talk about on all this stuff and this is where i stand i know for some of us some people that have never heard these things they're in shock like teachings like what ian does or you know all the other people the forerunners out there are in shock but this is what i always say listen you may not even have a grid for what you hear however if it gets you closer to the Lord Jesus Christ, if it gets you closer to understand that there is another level to build relationship with the father, if it gets you closer to understanding what your identity and your authority is, it is not a demon. It is not the devil teaching you. So, (laughs) and on the other token, if whatever you hear, it keeps you comfortable, makes you breathe easier and says, okay, yes, I heard my pastor said that my grandfather said that. However, if it denies the fullness of the sacrifice and the victory that Jesus did for you and for me to walk in and through the cross into the fullness, then I'm telling you is the doctors of demons uh, uh, undercover with the spirit of religion. So with all that being said. I I, I totally agree. I just wrote an article for uh, Megamorphosis Magazine about being shackled by comfort. So if you're hearing messages that just fit you in your place and keep you still, okay, I'm good. I'm good. I don't need to, you know, I'm good. You know, I agree. Truth truth is a being, okay? 
Mm-hmm. I've encountered truth as a being, and it literally reflects the facets, multi-facets, and colors and frequencies of the heart of God. Yeah. So tr- the, the, the mandate, if you will, of truth is to always reveal and unfold the things that the Father has that are found in his heart. There are mysteries that were held for generations and ages. So if reincarnation is part of that, you know, which, I, again, I have some thought on it, um, uh, and the Lord is still speaking to me about that. I just, it, listen, anything you hear, if it brings you closer to the Lord, I don't believe it's from the devil. I believe it's yeah. from God. And I know this yeah. is very taboo. <laughs> I'm not saying I believe in reincarnation at all, yeah. but I'm saying we need to allow truth that comes out of the heart Come of the on. Father to guide us. And let me yes. tell you, the level of truth that I'm walking in today is not maybe what I had in yesterday because the purpose of truth, now it will never deny right. itself, but the mm-hmm. purpose of truth is to always unfold and reveal the next level that I'm ready to go yeah. on with the Father. Exactly. So if reincarnation is part of it, I don't know. But I'm, what I'm saying is I'm learning that God is continually unveiling and unfolding truth. Yeah. And if yeah. it gets me closer to the Lord, Jesus Christ, to relationship, it is not from the devil. So, but I do have some then, thoughts on that, but I'm not sure. But it's a yeah. good question. I, well, I think, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I, I was just going to say, because in the third series, we're actually teaching this very thing. And I wanted to go to Adina, and because and, I know, Adina, you've got some thoughts on this too. Uh, but Derek, if you if you wanted to jump in, go ahead. No, I want, I'll say this. So like, and, and, and a lot of the groups that we run in and I've trust me, like the some of the counseling and, and one on one sessions that I've done with people have been coming out of cults and I've come out of them where these people use the Bible to teach reincarnation. But you'll find out that the, we, we need to talk about these cults and, and make sure that they're healthy cults or they're healthy ecclesias. Right. Because in a lot of these places, someone has the revelation that uh, Derek is King David reincarnated. And we need to come to Derek to hear what King David has to say. So a lot of these people will point in, in I'm a, there's ways to identify this. I'm going to do a teaching on it, but they always point to themselves. Yeah. God, the Holy Spirit is not going to point you to a man. It's not going to right. exalt the teachings right. of men. It's going to exalt King Jesus on high and yeah. lifted up. And he alone, he's, je- right. he's a, a jealous God. He wants his glory. But there are pockets of people, and I've been dealing with them for years. I've, I've ran into groups of people. There's 12 guys. They claim to be all the 12 disciples reincarnated, and they are here to establish the kingdom on the earth, and they have a huge following. There's one guy in Florida who claims to be Jesus come back. There's another guy who claims to be the Apostle Paul. And, like, people, they're good because they bring something different. They're good at tickling the ears of the people. And we yeah. have some things that may tickle the ears if we're not careful. Out-of-body yeah. travel, ascension, revelations from God. And that, for the person who's just looking for something new, they can be like, oh, so we have I to be right careful that mm-hmm. we're pointing them back to Jesus Absolutely. and not to sign up for our ministry or we are the ones we have to address this because I'm telling you I've dealt with them and I'm dealing with people and even after my sessions with them part of them is still hanging on because that guy blew their mind with truth about the energy and vibration and sound and resonance and I can travel and I can uh, summon angels instantly to show up in this room and they have weird power the Bible says that the Antichrist will be able to call down fire from heaven at will and these people can blow your mind but they're leading you to some weird far out heretical truth that exalts man over Christ mm-hmm. and we got to yeah. make sure that the main thing praise you Lord is the main thing That's always very good. right on Derek right on I do have to say though you, you do remind me of King David for some reason <laughs> <laughs> it's because he's dead sexy <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say, you know, where the reincarnation, like, you know, I really messed this life up and I have to come back as a spider. Mm-hmm. I think that that is totally off. It distorts the image of God. And, and as Karina talked about, you know, what Yeshua did for us. And then, you know, I think when we begin to understand the great cloud of witnesses and all of that, it's like each one is so unique and beautiful and we are eternal beings. So what would be the purpose of reincarnation? Okay. And so I, I would take a little different stand at the same time. I would say God can do whatever he wants to do, but I, I love the value and the uniqueness that God puts in each person that 
no two snowflakes are alike. And so why would there be this issue of having to, and so it, to me, it, reincarnation is a little bit of a twisting of the great cloud of witnesses because the Bible talks about, you know, we're connected with them. They're not made perfect apart from us. And it's this beautiful tapestry woven together. But, you know, if it's this reincarnation, well, we didn't get it right. So we have to come back and we have to be another color this time or something. Uh, you know, I don't know. It, it doesn't. Um, I don't want to come back. I don't want to, I don't want to have a different family and different friends. Like I want to be with you guys. Like, you know, I want to be with my family. I don't want to like, you know, and I, I believe that that's something that Jesus through him, through yeah. everlasting life gives us that we have this security that on the other side, we will know each other. And yeah. I mean, I don't want to keep doing this over and over. And, and, um, you know, this is, um, we have to talk about, I know it sounds crazy for people who are new to this, but there's people listening who, I mean, the, these teachings that we're talking about and we're privy to, like people are taking little pieces and running with it. You know what I'm saying? And they're, and they're trying yeah. to build ministries and they're trying to yeah. build followers. Mm -hmm. And now, cause in this life, they are nobody. They may have been a drug addict. They may have been something and, you know, and they always wanted to be somebody, but the, the whole thing with this reincarnation, whether you're Edgar Casey reincarnated or mm -hmm. your King David reincarnated, it's an instant um uh, validation you have yeah. to listen to me because i'm elisha and yeah. they'll, and they'll pull people to the side and say you know i never told nobody this and uh because nobody can handle it but you can handle it right. i'm really elijah and That's like if flattery, they've shown yeah. you signs and wonders you're like yeah okay show me in the scripture and they're like and they they have this man we have to be careful dealing with these cults man and we got to bring yeah. truth because i always yeah. want we want to be careful but we never want to stifle exploration so there's just like yeah, a yeah. two-handed compliment almost, you know? And I think, and I think as, it's Go ahead, Martin. I was just saying as a, as a dean, it's, I think with reincarnation, right? I mean, no, it's not that constant cycle to get to nirvana, right? Where you constantly learn. And I think even in the word where it talks about, you know, coming as spirit of Elijah, it's the mantle of Elijah. It's not the reincarnation. Oh, and, you know, Derek, it's not reincarnated david that hey let's go listen to david through you know derek yeah. it's the mantle there but what we do see um several times through scripture is is eternal life right we see jesus okay. meeting yeah. with moses and elijah who also represented the law and the prophets as well but we the word does talk about the cloud of witnesses but that's not a reincarnation that's mm -hmm. not a changing of people right it might be a changing of our flesh or a transfiguration into glorified bodies but there's a there some of the concepts i think do uh resonate but not at the core of it and i think yeah. Derek, you, you point out perfectly that most of those people are pointing back to themselves for value yeah, you always see that right? man always absolutely and and one of the guys and derek you and i talked about on interview that you know yeah, a guy were, that yeah I, you were in a group yeah yeah, and he he said he was Elijah, and, and I even had an extremely powerful vision that, as you and I talked about, I'm still wrestling with because it seemed to confirm this guy before he even told me. And But it always pointed back to him, yeah. and it had some jacked-up theology with who Jesus <laughs> was, that he was just simply an alien, you know, E.T., on a spaceship waiting He's for our us soul to, brother or something too yeah and not god eternal not the yeah. the jesus that we know of the bible and so it always points to something different either themselves or something different than god eternal god the father creator of the universe yeah. you know i i i want to just say that uh I, i'm in total agreement with you guys i i I have for myself had to learn to adapt because I was so close minded, you know, several years ago to anything that was not of my, you know, the, that fit in my grid um, that I would not accept it. And so I've had to shift and this is for me again, but I've had to shift to a place where, um, you know, I, I've said this before. I don't want to say that I have the end result and the, the final word on anything. You know, so whether it's reincarnation or whether it's, uh, uh, you know, being on the Galactic Council or, you know, whatever it might be, I, yeah. I just want to say that, you know, for myself, I'm, I, I hold everything loosely 
you know? Yeah. And I leave at least a tiny bit of room because if I don't leave a tiny bit of room, then I become unteachable. And so if I were wrong in where I was standing, what, what I thought was right, then there'd be no room for me to move or to budge. And I think that's really scary for a lot of people, but I also think it's part of the maturing process that we're able to have that room. Because the other thing is, if we don't have that little bit of room, when someone does come to me with a totally different you know, idea, uh, you know, that's totally against what I believe, right. I'm going to shut them off immediately mm-hmm. versus being willing to listen to see if I can see some truth. It doesn't mean I have to agree with them, but it, to at least respect them enough to take a look and not just shut them yeah. down because I know it all. Mm-hmm. Right. Unless you're that's King David, if you come to me with or my friends with King David, I'm shutting you down. <laughs> <laughs> as a person now if you can if his apparition appears and we meet with him that's another story but as far as you being king david in the flesh i got problems with that we gotta i mean that's the whole thing with like we have to draw the line somewhere because if not we'll see right. things we'll get a check right. in our spirit but you like because and, and i have to be honest because it's like well if i check them then they'll check me on my weird stuff or you know what i'm saying and so we have to like have some type yeah. of foundation or a backbone to where there's a plumb line right yeah maybe there's three right. plumb, plumb right. lines that are good for us to live by right oh, but there's yeah. some <laughs> type of standard where we got to check ourselves to make sure that we're in the faith too there Michael he is Bassett. oh my goodness Oh my goodness. We are so happy that you embraced your presence. (laughs) A true wizard is never late. He's always on time. Sorry, I'm. (laughs) A wizard is never late. (laughs) (laughs) Nice to see when he decides to have his phone turn on. And I'm also locked out of my office. This is great. (laughs) (laughs) I caught the last five minutes, guys. I'm so sorry. It's. it's, so crazy the things that are happening here the last 24 hours are ridiculous there's something going on it must be this show it must right. be all of this energy coming together so speaking of reincarnation michael who are you <laughs> that's that a good question well, i might be elijah i might be david i might, might be <laughs> those are the two that everybody keeps going to there's something to that <laughs> Right. Nobody wants to reincarnate people. That I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I'm the oh, woman at the well, was. right? <laughs> <laughs> I just came from Asia land. I've lived with Buddhists and Taoists and Shintoists and atheists and communists, and they've all got some kind of weird trip like that. So, you know, mm. we're here in Hawaii, and um, it's it's a different ball game here. And uh, it's been amazing what God has done here, doing uh, mission work in different uh, countries. And now I, I believe that what's happening with this team of people, with all of you broadcasters and spirit-filled people, that this is, um, it's unheard of in the body to have people like humble enough to kind of allow others a platform together yeah. and to work together. And my grandfather, Don Basham, did the same thing with Don, uh, Derek Prince and Ern Baxter, and it's a very powerful thing. I think the enemy is afraid of this, definitely, because you know everybody has their own ministry or some prophecy or some amazing aura and <laughs> mantle, and but you don't. What's going to draw the world to the kingdom is this humility, not just like, look at me, I'm so spiritual, but like wow like you've got spirit-centered business you've got truth seeker you've got kingdom talks and more um <laughs> it's just karina yes. and martin and yeah Karen. great to meet you <laughs> nice to meet you there are flying penguins in our midst that's right <laughs> anyway i'm i don't want to take I'm, you guys uh talk i'm i'm not here on the street i'm locked out of my office i'm just gonna <laughs> <laughs> just another day Real in life. paradise right <laughs> just get here when you can michael that's good man okay. you know another thing that's kind of interesting with the whole reincarnation bit and, and michael brought it up is that you're always looking to your past life you're still looking to yourself to understand what it is and it takes you away from the father it takes you oh, away that's good really yeah. going to the father asking the father and, and ultimately, I'd say it takes us away from the relationship with the Father, mm-hmm. which is really what 
a lot of this is about is that intimacy and relationship, which is when Jesus died and rose again, he, he allowed for the, the gateway to have that intimacy. And he is the gateway, yeah. have that direct intimacy without a priest, without a mediator that we can now go direct to the father. And that yeah. changes everything versus trying to learn from our past or, or ancient masters or any of those things. We can get good info, uh, but nothing like we can going straight to the Father exactly. and have that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, I love what you guys are saying because for me, every time I um, teach or I speak or I talk, you know, just one on one with people, the problem that we have in this new uh, era, this new age that the Lord has brought us in, where we're talking about these amazing things that before were taboo. This is the thing that I always say. We need to make sure that we let people know that this is not formulas. There is no specific yeah. formula. There's no, you know, uh, uh, magic words. It's relationship. Yeah. Because yes. anything you hear being taught, if it does, it's simple. For me, it's simple. Anything I hear or I encounter or revelation that does not take me into the heart of God to build relationship with him, I will lay it to the side. And at the same token, like Gil, like you were saying, you want to, for me, I want to hold everything loosely um, because I do, I want to make sure that when revelation comes in truth, I don't, you know, I'm not like, no, that's not God. But in that, the plan line is very simple and strong. Does it build a deeper relationship with God? Does it point me yeah. back to Jesus? Yeah. If it tells me that Jesus is not the only way, <laughs> then that's my plumb line. I'm out of here. Yeah. Cause then no longer is that Christianity. Yeah. It's universalism. Yeah. And I, you know, I, that's why I'm like, it's for me, it's very simple. God has all these mysteries that he's unveiling. It's a season of mysteries. You know, yeah. the truth is bringing revelation is bringing, but the plumb line is simple. Is it getting me closer to walk with Jesus? Cause he's the only then, game for me. Yeah. So, so do you know what, what were the three things? Cause I, I can't remember them. What, that was one of them that we were sharing that we need to, you know, that's really important that uh, number one, does it make your God bigger? Mm -hmm. Does it bring you closer to him? And what, wasn't there a third one that we were. There was. Oh, okay. So I'm in, I'm in good company with my wife. Cause she can't remember either. <laughs> I think that goes back to your identity too, you know, because yeah. you are, um, were made for a purpose and to reincarnate, incarnate into something else, you know, that yeah. takes away from who you, who you are, who you were created to be too, and shine a light on others. Yeah. So, I mean, if the cloud of witnesses are those who've gone before us who were not complete and are still there in the cloud of witnesses and haven't been reincarnated to come down here to do their part, to finish whatever it was there to finish, that would be a pretty good indicator for me anyway, that the reincarnation model isn't really something yeah. father uses. Right. Well, some, some people believe that they, you know, would reincarnate like the new age would say, you come back as another person until they get it right. Like they have to keep taking these right. tests over and over yeah. and over. And then they reach godhood, as some would say, or that they are able to take their rightful place in the great cloud of witnesses to become teachers. They still have to deal with their stuff. And then I don't see. I think you do that in this life. See, that's the thing. It throws the responsibility right. yeah. away. You got to do it now. Now is the time. Today is the day. Like, yeah. don't wait till you die. There's so much. There's so many holes in it. The suicide comes into play like people, sure. like that's a spirit there that okay uh I, I got it wrong this time let me try again oh, let gosh, me try yeah. and i know people who have struggled with that spirit because they believe in reincarnation and it, it becomes an option like mm -hmm. suicide becomes an option because they believe they get another chance at this thing but no we have mm -hmm. to get it right this life and make sure that we get to do it now so it's throwing a responsibility you know off of us and and what god ex requires of us you know mm -hmm. And I think the focus, too, is on me, 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 me getting it right instead of the biblical model that I see in Hebrews 11, where it says they're not made perfect apart from us, is this whole synergy of togetherness. Right. And, and that's really a mark of the next age is yeah. it's not about me, my ministry, what I'm going to do. But it's like the only way we're going to do what we need to do on earth is joining together in relationship not just with a father, but with one another. And so in that, it's not just about me, 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 
achieving godhood, but it's about how do we work together now, you know, and in this, in this next age, and whether we're cloud of witnesses or here, it's that the, the church in heaven and on earth is one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it's together we're accomplishing God's mission. Mm-hmm. That's an important mark of this next stage. And, and you know, before we were went live, we were talking about what are the parts of, of the next stage or even of the transition that have still yet to drop off, but we still have to move into them. You know, I, I know people who are stepping their toe into the area where we've been for a couple of years and, you know, and then there's people who have been way before us. Right. So, but there's this transition, the age. So what's part of the transition and then what's part of the next stage, if we could even, you know, imagine that we could, we would know, right. We don't <laughs> but exactly we have some sort of a revelation. What would that look like? You know, I'm going to sign off real quick here. I've got to get ready for a medieval banquet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go back in time, be re- reincarnated. <laughs> all right, all right. Have a glass of wassail for me and a, and a big old turkey leg, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, love you all. Bless you. All Bye-bye. right, bless you. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye. Well, we are coming up on the hour, and I know uh, I think at least one or two others need to take off. Uh, do we want to continue, or do we want to go ahead and wrap it up here, guys? I just asked a question. You can't just leave me hanging. <laughs> That's why we're going to wrap it up here. I think Berlin wants to continue. <laughs> Stay tuned for episode three. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. I'm, good. I'm good to keep going as long as anybody else is, as long as yeah, my minutes. Right. Michael Christ. just got here for crying out loud. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Go. They're all going to go. Karina, you need to be taken off. Is that correct? Yeah, I need to be going. Do you have any final words before you head out? Just encourage people. You know, if 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 you're in a place where you're like, okay, I know that even what the Bible says, I'm not doing it. If you find yourself in a place of frustration and you're looking at the word and you're you're looking at your situation, you're looking at the abilities that in your human flesh, you know, that you're walking in. I just want to encourage you, seek after the heart of God. Yeah. Because everything every absolutely every treasure every mystery every blueprint every key every dimension is found in and through the heart of god and once we focus on relationship you know it's we got to go past the the hearing the voice even holding his hand even seeing his face but actually hear the invitation that god is calling us to step into his heart yeah for Mm -hmm. whosoever chooses many are called but few are chosen and the choice is not because God is saying, you know, I, I like you better or I like your purple hair or no. The choice is your choice chooses wow. you. Your choice chooses you to walk in the fullness that Jesus gave to you and to me Come through on. the covenant of adoption. And I encourage you, let the frustration catapult you into relationship, into the heart of the father. And say, you know what? I'm going to lay down what I've been taught. I'm going to lay down what my mother, my pastor, my grandfather said to me. And I just want you, Father. I want you. Please, and I want so to good. walk in, in the fullness of what you've told me that I can walk in. Yeah. Now, not when you die. So that's my, you know, I just encourage you. Go after relationship. Go after his heart. And I'm telling you, when you attain it, that's why David was a man after God's own heart. Because he actually, he was, he pursued it so much until he walked in it. That's yep. why he lived yep. out of the timeline of God found in his heart. So go after the Lord. Thank you guys. It was so nice to meet every single one of you. That was so good, Karina. Thank you. Thank you for Thank being you, on Karina. here, Karina. Thank you, Karina. Thank you, Karina. Next time. God bless you. God bless See you soon. Right, bye. 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 So you know, I kind of so, want to just go ahead, Derek. Uh, so I was just going to say, Gil, so you, just oh, this morning I had a guy uh, call me on the phone and, you know, he had heard about the penguins and this and that. And his, He's like, man, I, I've been operating in the prophetic and I really want to grow and stretch my prophetic gifting. And I heard basically it's kind of like, I, maybe I can come hang out with you guys for a bit, you know? And as just talking with him, I was like, well, you know, God was kind of given some word of knowledge. I said, well, here's what's funny is you're bored with the prophetic right now. And he said, like, yeah, I guess I am. And he's, you know, but a year years ago before he was really operating in the prophetic, I said, you know, you used to look at where you are now and think if I could only get there, then everything would be fantastic. 
And so really just sharing with him, I said, honestly, I'm not, we don't, we're not going to focus on the prophetic. The prophetic happens, but it flows out of intimacy yeah. and identity with Christ. And I think part of my opinion, the new age, the next age, not new age, as we said, the next age, yeah. you know, uh, as we really transform, it's even less on my giftings and those types of things. It's far less on performance from an acceptance perspective. And it's on we're flowing from identity in Christ who defines everything about us. Our, our stuff and ministries and giftings don't define us, but he defines us. And we flow out of that, which means we can do everything. And, and I told him, I said, the funny thing is the people that want to come to our group and I'm probably every one of your groups that want to come in and be the show and be like the prophet or whatever, they don't last very long. They end up leaving because they figure out they're not very special here because we're, everybody can do everything and well, well, it, different degrees. That's a great point because some people get their identity in their gifts. Yeah. Like yep. some people, I'm a seer. And so everything, right. I'm a seer. And so if all of us are seers, then they're no longer special. You're absolutely yeah. right. And that's, and that's where I started. I was I've been a seer my whole life. And you know, when we first started Penguins, it was like what Karina start, was talking about, that we wanted the presence of God. And, you know, I was the resident seer, the other guy, one, the other guy was a prophet. And, you know, then one of the fifth guys couldn't do anything. Right. And so he was complaining that he wished he could see as clearly as I do. You know, of course, in my heart, I'm like, oh, you will, you will. But I'm like, yeah, that, that's me. That's my identity. Right. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> the next week we come in and I can't see Jack and the guy that prophesies couldn't prophesy and the guy that couldn't see anything is seeing more clearly than I ever have in my entire life. And I was upset. I was mad because that was my role. And then we get there the next week and God just shifts again. And he was just teaching us identity in Christ and not in the stuff and the giftings. And I think that's a huge piece of the next age, which is what I see with this group is that it allows us to promote each other yeah. and lift each yeah. other up because we're not <laughs> jealous for what somebody else has gifting wise or, or, or whatever that looks like. We can actually lift one another up yeah. with the spirit of truth. And it's, I think that's a huge piece of that is that community. It's not, it's not socialism, right? It is truly lifting one another up. And as we do that together as a whole and as a community, then everyone actually wins. And it's, I think that's a huge piece of the next stage is identity and then operating from intimacy with the father. And I kind of want to just speak to the promoting one another idea, because it almost sounds like, you know, we're, we're trying to promote, uh, you know, the ministry. And I, I really believe that each one of us that in our heart, what we're wanting to promote is the message that the father's put in us. Yeah. You know, because he's given us a blueprint, you know, this idea that everybody's a leader and that everybody needs to go through leadership training and all this stuff. It's like, no, that's not the body. You know, you don't have it. You know, the, the body can't just be a head. Um, but at the same time, we you know, there are also um, uh, I'm actually losing losing my point here. The, the the thing that we we really want to stay focused on is what is the message that the Father has given us, and that we all kind of stay in our lane and humbly step into the body and do our part. Yeah. And there, you know, I think, well, I know for me for myself that it's very true that Father, you know, I keep asking this like God, why did you choose me to do this message? of love, unconditional love, because aside from being in him, I really suck at it. Seriously. Well, that, that's what, see, but that's the thing. That's what <laughs> qualifies you, Gil. That's the only thing that qualifies you is that you suck at it. If he was really good, then he would shoot, pick over you and get someone else. I think you're saying that he really didn't suck at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Derek, for confirming yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. He just, yeah, right. Really? No, no, no. I, I'm saying it because no, I mean, I, I it's, it's a scripture that yeah. the Lord gave me when we're talking about exalting men. 
because we have to be careful because we have a we've created a Christianity that creates celebrities and right. it creates yeah. these these guys on these pedestals where we want to <clears throat> like these are the go to guys when when really the the focus is the ecclesia which is us yeah. we want to summon a spirit we want to summon angels that's a great way to do it if we all come together and we pray the Bible says there he is in the midst of us we come mm-hmm. together not let's go see yeah. G- go see True Seeker because he's got a great way of summoning Jesus' presence in a room right. whatever yeah. that's cool but when we come together collectively and bring our sacrifices to the altar our things that we're dealing our sacrifice of praise even and come together and for, and, for, and we we literally are christ reincarnated on the earth we are the body of christ on the earth as we come yeah. together right we're like yeah. voltron or whatever the case is so there's that but going back it's, it's first corinthians 129 because it's like you can you can do all the study and all the the learning and go to the college and seminary and all of these things and you can be the right candidate for it you got all the head knowledge but you don't have the anointing you can have yeah, right. talent and, and be really well versed with words. But Paul says, look, I don't come with the wisdom, wisdom, intelligence of words. Power. Half of the time, I can't even formulate sentences. You know what I'm saying? So, but he says, I come well, with power. Well, you can't even spell truth right. <laughs> exactly. But he says, I come with power in a demonstration, not the wisdom of words, but of power right. in the demonstration yeah. of the yeah. Holy Ghost. Um, which yeah. goes back again. First yeah. Corinthians one twenty nine is the key, but he goes through just like showing the disciples and saying why God doesn't pick the people who the world would pick. Like I would, I wouldn't pick me. I wouldn't pick you guys. There's other yeah. people who have a bigger following, bigger platforms. There, they yeah. got a bigger email list. I would pick those people to partner with, or whatever the case is. Right? Like in in the wisdom of the world, there's reasons to pick over us. But God sees the the the, the gems within us and say, you know what? I'm I'm getting them ready for such a time as this because. Why? First Corinthians one twenty nine. And he's given all these reasons why he's not picking those who are well trained or those who are the best at it. He's picking those who suck at it because he doesn't want any flesh to glory in his presence. Yeah. And that's yeah. what we get when we start pointing at men. Oh, true seeker. Oh, Gil. Oh, whoever. The, the uh, Todd White. I'm getting ready to go to a, a conference next week. <laughs> it was like a roster of all star Christian celebrities and they're all anointed, but they're like, like it's, you know, we, it's not, we're not what we're supposed to be, but I want to just, yeah. I'll just read this really quick. It's really good. Um, first Corinthians one 26. I'll start, I'll start there. It says for you see your calling, <laughs> not my calling, not you, you see your calling brethren that not many wise according to the flesh. Now we need people who are wise in the spirit. But it says, uh, not many wise who are according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. I want to. Yeah. I want some fools. Some fools for me. That's why I'm here, Michael. He, know, he knows his calling. The beginning says, "For you see your calling, you know it." And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things. That, which are mighty and the base things of the world and the things which are despised God has chosen. This is how he works guys. God has chosen and the things which are not to bring to nothing, the things that are, this is King, King James, but, um, and it says the reason at one twenty nine says that no flesh should glory in his presence. Yeah. But of yeah. him, really think about that. That's powerful. You are in Christ Jesus, who became for us the wisdom of God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That, as it is written, he who glories, <clears throat> let him glory in the Lord. Amen. Give all the glory and honor back to him. Woe Amen. is me if I preach not the gospel. I love Amen. angels. I love aliens. I love you guys know I love all types of things. Right. But woe is me. If I preach not the gospel and it's the yeah, emphasis yeah. has to always be on Jesus. This is for us like the to make sure we're in the tree of life like this. Jesus yeah. is the tree of life. Right. To make sure that we're in him. And he, ha- he has a way of putting these people together who you can't do it on your own. That's what there would be. Nobody, if, you know, and, he, and people have gotten really good or at least fooling people that they can do it on their own. But to really come together in the spirit of unity is where Jesus is in the midst of yeah. rebuke, exhortation, um, discernment, 
moving into prophetic giftings and prophetic abilities is not to exalt men. We are men and people want to exalt us all the time. And, and we have to, we have to like always point, point to Christ. And, uh, and we have to be able to see that we can see it. Like, you know, I can see it. Not everybody can. There's people who are new to this that we can whisk them away in some weird truth and they're gone. And the scripture says that it's better for you to tie a great millstone around your neck and jump into the sea than to cause any of these little ones to stumble. So woe to any of you out there who are causing the little ones to stumble, even (laughs) ourselves, man. It's the it's the intentions. Now, if we're into some truth and we're just we're off a little bit nobody has it all figured out. That's why we're coming together to figure this stuff out and teach it, point back to Jesus. But it's the intentions of the heart because there's people out there who are intentionally weaving these webs for these people. And I, and just as I'm telling you the burden that God has for us and Jesus has put, uh, God put it within Jesus for his sheep that he's willing to leave the 99 to go after the one we, he's given us that as well. For the people in our midst and the people who have been looked over, the people who's been deceived and stuff. And um, I don't want to. I'm passionate about this, you know, because it's happening. Like we have people we've opened up truths. Right. And I and and, and really even some people in chat who I love dearly um, who are showing me different ministers that they're listening to, you know, and I'm like, hold on. No, hold on. And if 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 right. if if my teachings have opened up a realm to think that that's okay let me Mm. nip that in the bud yeah yeah good point and it's important for us to as we're going through this transition and we're and we're pulling people out of the the old age the the pisces age and into the aquarius of the next stage that our language doesn't um frighten them from anything else like if we say words Like someone was using the word shaman. I'm like, just don't use the word shaman. (laughs) You know, it's like, oh, please. Because that will put the brakes on whoever we're talking to, to explore and actually be able to track with us and make that journey that we did whenever, when we started, right? Now, I would have never followed someone who said the word shaman a few years ago. You know, like, ah, Uh, you know, exactly, right? Yeah, that's that's the weird thing. Yeah, Derek and I had a great show on the words that we use, but we have to have uh, discernment as far as where they are so that we don't trip them up with our language. Even though we're so excited know to show audience. them, hey, I met Enoch, and we, you know, jumped on a spaceship, and we, you know, did all this crazy stuff, but they, it's like, whoa, you're just off the chart. You're a flat earther, or whatever. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like Derek was saying earlier that we really have to be careful that we're not just appeasing, you know, to those who are looking for the tickling of the ears. Yeah. Um, and that's why even when I've seen things in some of the, you know, uh, journeys that we've been on that are out of the ordinary, I'm, I, I really wait, you know, if the father keeps pointing to that, you know, pointing to that picture, pointing to whatever it is I'm seeing, then I will share it. But I am reluctant to share things that are a little out of the, the box. All, you know, we're already out of the box, but um, exactly. See, I'm reluctant to share oh, yeah. those things because I don't want people to say, oh, so we've got the new next best thing. And, and so let's go with this. Yeah. And, yeah. No, but and, we and also that, need to speak the truth. Well, that's hmm. the, the way I've kind of branded what I've been doing. It's just been so outside of the box and outside of the church that I've really, you know, been able to use those terms and say what, okay, what do they mean and stuff. So it's even weirder for me because I'm in those realms right. interviewing shamans and relating it back to the scripture. Yeah. Okay. Where does the shaman fit in the scripture? Maybe it's a different word, right? These types right. of things. So exactly. I've kind of put myself out there. So there is the check. Right you're leading people Mm -hmm. into shamanism or you're leading people into, they may do a Google search on how to do shamanism because truth seeker said it or whatever. And there could be some breaking up a little bit, buddy. There there could be some danger there, right? You need the shaman. Okay. He he, he does have a very unique place to be able to use those words and discuss, but but again, it's that discernment, like where are people currently and how do you have the conversation? So Derek's Again. audience of where those people are is different than my audience in Spirit Centered Business or our audience in Kingdom yeah. Talks, right? Yeah. Right. So, 
Oh. Am, am I back, guys? <laughs> Yes, uh, you're frozen, but we can hear you. Okay, it's you back. can hear me. Um, so again, like yeah. you know, we, we've talked about this many times. Is the fact that um, even though that that stuff may open up doors for people to explore, maybe get lost in, I, and I believe wholeheartedly that there's other ministers out there, even some of the ones who are just more cut and dry, some of the bigger names, maybe Reformed theology, who like if you fall into mm. their work, yeah. you you're gonna get lost as well and go down some weird paths or shutting or even like quenching the holy spirit or the holy spirit doesn't operate like that anymore the new age does new age is fine and well of spiritual giftings and abilities but as far as the cross in christ we don't have access to that there's people who believe that you know so we it, it kind of it's, it works both ways you know <laughs> hey michael i, I, I think what Trisky is doing is really important because i mean i don't have the patience to interview a bunch of shamans and <laughs> <astrology>. <laughs> 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 Warlocks. Warlocks. Um, I, I talked to a, I talk to a high level, a very highly venerated Buddhist uh, master lady in Taiwan for a few hours, and, and I mean, she was just worshiping her and telling me like, "Oh, she's a reincarnated whatever," and this and that, and it was like, "Okay, well, let's see who she's got." So we sat down, and and they were interested because I'd had experiences meeting ghosts and talking to things and. Experience, supernatural experiences because they're not used to Christians who would pray for the dead. And I was like, I was in the children of God and we were trained to like, Hey, you go jogging through a graveyard, pray for them. Maybe they'll, they'll they need Jesus. And maybe in Asia, they, there are a lot of uh, ghosts that need to know Jesus. So, but the thing that I found with her was just everything else she was talking about was great. She understood of Illuminati stuff. She understood a lot of uh, problems in, and corruption in the world. The one thing I noticed is she didn't understand salvation. Like she was telling her people, this congregation of thousands and thousands of very humble and devoted Buddhists. They were, and I got to talk to them too about the fringe radio network. It was really funny, but she was just teaching them works. It was like how to get out of the wheel of Buddha, which turns, turns, turns. You must do good things and we must, uh, you know, give them food sacrifice to the idols. And it was like, really like this is just another catholic thing like it was kind of um it was kind of a letdown to be honest although i don't doubt that a lot of that stuff is true you know giving food to people in another dimension like kind of like stranger things you know the upside down <laughs> world taiwan everywhere you go there is food on the streets for the ghosts during ghost mm -hmm. month you feel that stuff like a soup you're walking through this like really weird like oh it does it's not a very good clean feeling it's like doing like really bad kind of drugs i've never done drugs but you know you're doing like, <laughs> just really imagine and you're not gonna <laughs> feel good yeah, all right. that, you know? <laughs> so it's just the spirit is so clean and i stood here last night one of the reasons i was late we were up really late last night praying with each other um the guard here is an army guy he's a christian another christian guy we met we're like we need to watch out for each other. Here in Waikiki, it's like Aleister Crowley, witchcraft, Ville. It's, it's a city of total darkness. And us Christians, we're finding each other, and it's just like, let's hold hands, let's pray for each other, let's start something. So um, I'm going to probably interview this guy. It's, it's going to be um, some kind of a street brothers watching out for each other called You Are Not Alone Church or Street Church or something. Awesome. So add another networker to the list there. <laughs> I'll post the show to, I'll post the thing to the next stagers or to the end to the um, Christ consciousness. But um, I mean, I don't know all the answers to this stuff. I don't know if you could be reincarnated. Jesus said that Elijah uh, was John the Baptist, but it was kind of like a, it was not something that everybody needed to believe. I don't think it's that important to know if you're, but I, I still think he had his own identity. It's like you could have an angel who is so close to you that at times maybe you would confuse your identity with that angel or saint or something well that's a familiar spirit i don't know honestly. <laughs> but it's a rare that's the devil that's the devil <laughs> i think i'm a reincarnated squirrel that just oh. did really good I, I apparently, <laughs> apparently peter's angel was so close to him that they mistook the uh, peter for the angel so you know yeah the angel of, of someone's presence. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Lee, um, Manifestor Yada, pretty guru-y guy. Bless his, bless his soul in his ministry. 
he talked about the angel of the presence that they saw Peter's angel. And that was something that the Hebrews understood as like a normal thing. Do you mm-hmm. guys remember uh, Todd Bentley's angels mm. with the Florida mm-hmm. revival? And he has, he has tattoos of his angels. Uh, mm. These green, a green, I, I want to say her name was Emma. I'm not sure, but you can oh. Google it. And there's he has a tattoo of this green woman that would appear to him and he got it tattooed on him. And uh, that was before he, well, you want to say f- fell into sin or whatever and s- left his wife for the new lady. And um, when he was at the height of the Florida revival, they would just, it turned into angel meetings where he would, you know, kind of guide everybody of what they seen these angels doing and everybody would just come and witness angels and stuff like that. And in the spirit though, I don't think any, there was any physical manifestation. Have y'all ever seen that? Google it if you've never seen it. The angel. Yeah, Emma. I, I don't recall. It. I was um, I was there in Florida <laughs> for his uh, for that. Oh, wow. Do you remember that the, the angel thing though? Wow. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, and I think there you bring up an interesting piece, and and I mean we may all have different opinions on this, but I think you know while we can partner with angels, we can work with angels. Obviously, we don't worship angels, and I think even in in like something like a Todd Bentley. And I don't know if I'm, I'm speculating, but you know, if you get off to where you go down an angel rabbit hole to where your focus becomes on meeting with the angels versus the father. Yeah. And I think we, we are in, I think there's a risk there, right. That, that it, it steers us. it steers us slightly off. And so if our focus remains in the father and remains on him, then our partnership with angels is, is probably more correct um, in that space of it. But I think there's always that challenge, just like anything with prophecy or healing or whatever, if our focus becomes prophecy uh, or healing, I mean, we've, we've seen guys that are extremely prophetic, but they are jerks. I mean, they're not good fun people to be with uh and they can be very manipulative but but they operate in that gifting incredibly well but they don't carry really the heart of the father that intimacy and i think that's yeah again i think that's what we might i think we're seeing more and more that as next age next agers and and that gets ushered in it's those things still flow and happen but the focus is always on that intimacy with the father I, I, I would not disagree with what you just said. I would just um, add that part of my experience in, in my experiences in the heavens, and I think Chris Carter would say this if he were here as well, but that- I'm gonna that, agree um, with you too. <laughs> what's that? I'm gonna agree with you too, because I know you're gonna- Sorry. <laughs> oh, there it is. There you go. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. We had it for a second. Oh, I, must have it. I agree, and I was going to jump in with that too. Yeah, oh, it's just. Uh, uh, oh. Good and good. And, so that's what they had, in, or that was Todd Billy's angel? One of them. I mean, he had many. Yeah, he got a tattoo. Mm. That doesn't look like an angel to me. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so what I was going to say, and I think Gil was going to say, is that in my experience, the angels will point you to God. Yeah. You know, in fact, if you're having, if you're focused on them too much, they'll just shut up or disappear. Yeah. Good point. No? Yeah, for sure, for sure. So I was going to share something a little bit differently, though, okay. because, um, you know, Chris uh, has a beautiful way of telling the gospel story and the story of creation about, you know, just uh, how the Father poured himself out into all of creation into the angels, into us, that he's poured himself out into us. And that my experience has been sometimes when I've gone to speak with the father, to ask him questions, that rather than him saying, well, let me, let me tell you all the answers, he will direct me to an angel or another being to get that answer because he's already poured that answer into them. And he, I believe the father thoroughly believes in the body that we are all one and that he is more about us engaging with these other beings that he's already poured this information into, or this relationship into, and that we would want to develop relationships, but you're absolutely right. We do not worship them. And never do we step into the worship of them, but we're all about relationships. I mean, we're having relationships 
you know, here in the, the earth. I mean, with the, all of us here, you know, we're developing relationship with one another. So, yeah, I, like I said, I don't disagree with you. I just think there are times that, you know, in the body, there's a certain yeah. assignment that an angel or a person may have in the body. And that's why they're there for that yeah. purpose to engage with in that scenario, whatever it might be. The, the scripture says we see in part, we know in part. And I know that's, right. yeah. that, that's a universal principle for a lot of different things within Christendom. But I think it goes back to, again, what I was saying earlier is that we engage the father in the secret place. But yeah. he doesn't give you the, the entire formula. That's no, there's no faith in that. God operates right. off of faith, and without faith, it's impossible to please him. So as you get into the, the, the presence of God and you draw away with him, he'll give you something. He'll give you a peace. I'm telling you, it's a beautiful peace. Anything that you get from the Father is good. I don't care if it's a piece of that coal that touched uh, Isaiah's lips or whatever. Um, yeah. Anything that the, the Father gives you that you're able to take out of that encounter, he's going to continue to reveal it to you in the waking state. There's no vision. I mean, even in the scriptures when, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, who was it, Jacob um, ha ha had the vision, he's like seeing stalks of wheat and fire, and he's like, well, those wheat represent, he had to like seek the Lord. Okay, what does right. this mean? Am I, is there going to be a crazy harvest coming? It has something to do with the harvest, but those are your brothers. And so that you have to keep seeking him on it. We see in part, we know in part, he starts off giving us a peace in the heavens or ascension or just drawing away to the Father's heart in prayer like Jesus stayed in communion. But he get, he continues to reveal it in our waking state. Oh, we go here. Oh, we go there. It opens up doors and someone comes and then you have an email or an opportunity comes up and God just continues in the waking state. It's not like you just go into the dream state and you get every everything about your life and uh, you may you may get a big piece of the vision. Your piece may be something really big, but still, it, like practical faith and walking it out is the test and prove yeah. that you even believe that that vision was true anyway. That you're going to walk it out and trust God, and that's the way He He does. He gives us pieces of the pieces He gives us literally are like breadcrumbs. Here's a piece, and you have to like follow Him through the wilderness, or like the um, Israelites followed Him keeps through that the relationship desert. Going. Right. It keeps me. Yeah. So you got to keep moving yeah, and keep true. following him. And, um, and, and love it. That's how it works. That's one of the cool things about Christians, too, is we tend to realize, like, when we really are following Jesus is the power of humility. And you guys have gifts that I don't have. I have something to share that nobody else has. And none of us in ourselves have the complete message. But, um, from my experience with angels and dreams and all this, I would just say there's so much that we don't know. And when you have yeah. in the fringe network community, there's definitely a huge debate about whether or not we're allowed to actually access them without them coming to us. And mm. very smart people that I respect are like, well, we're not allowed to even touch that because the Bible only has angels talk to you and you don't talk to them. You don't call on them. But I mean, that's the Bible doesn't say not to do it too. It's just, we're like, we're literally in 2020. What are we supposed to do with what's happening out there? You know, the SRA stuff and what we're up against. I believe that the angelic is one of the many new weapons that God has given us with which to help further the gospel. But of course, whether an angel or a penguin or any entity comes <laughs> preaching another gospel, you know, don't listen to them. But I would say, right. look at Martin look at martin smith you know this guy if you've been listening to his latest shows like he has been attacked for his faith and he's been actually persecuted for it and that to me is one of the one of the signs that this is the real deal like it's not all about a big holy spirit goose pimple that you pop when you have the revelation it's more like you're gonna you Ew, are going to be stuck in my mind for the rest of the Did day you have to right. give that visual? i'm done Oh, oh here it comes. that's it. You're gonna be 86 him. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we talked about language earlier, okay? We need to watch our language so that we don't lead people astray, Michael. <laughs> that's right. I meant to say goosebump, but it just kind of slipped out. <laughs> yeah, this is this is the great thing. We should expect persecution. I mean, I came from the mission field and I've seen missionaries gone crazy and the people with 
I'm a healer and I went to a Todd Bentley thing. I, I like Todd White. But then there's no true religion of, are you helping the women and the children? Are you defending the widow and the orphan? It's like when it comes to that, yeah. you find out there's. Yeah, we can't forget the basics. Right. You got to have some street cred, we, man. You got to get out there with the people. You can't just, I mean, you can you start an internet, uh, internet ministry and, and blow up or whatever, but I want to see your credentials, man. I want to know that you've been in this thing for a while and you're walking it out. You're not just taking notes and stepping out. And so you have a lot of people yeah. <clears throat> sitting in places of authority or rulerships from behind Facebook ministries and that kind of thing. And they, they've never been out there with the people, you know, with the drug addicts, with the homosexuals yeah. or whatever, wherever it is. You know what I'm saying? Just going out there and being one of them. Get out of your get out of your studio, get out of your house and get out there with the people, man. Absolutely. Well, I do agree that you need to get out there with the people, but we're not all called to the drug street crowd. I I know that when I'm in business meetings and there's so many spiritual people there, those are the people that I'm supposed to be reaching. Yeah. You know, well, it's a physical so. thing. Yeah. You're getting out there and that's your calling. So it's not yeah. you're not yeah. you're not just coming sit down and pushing that yeah. live button and just going you're act, you're going into the right. field the bible says go that out into all the world yeah right. and that's that's another key too is just recognizing again that we each have our lane that we each have a, our part of the body that we're operating in and mm -hmm. that we bless one another we encourage one another in what they're called to do and not, you know, because I know, Derek, you've been, you know, stabbed in the back by the church so often because you're out there actually engaging yeah. and reaching these people by engaging with them in relationship, not just going out and saying, hey, you need Jesus. Yeah. Hop on this bandwagon. No, it's not about that. It's about developing the relationship. And I guarantee you, there's not too many people in the Christian church that are willing to do that. And right. so because yeah, they've you not are been used to that. They 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 have stabbed you in the back rather than encouraging you. And like I'm yeah. saying, brother, keep on going and keep on going. And we are here for you and, you know, to help any way we can in the mission that you've got, because yeah. that's one that, like I said, most Christians won't touch. Right. Yeah. It's true. Well, and I think, you know, um, just listen to some of Mike Parsons stuff and even the, the maturity growth, you know, every level of maturity as you move from slave, you know, slavery mentality in Christianity to even bond servant moving out into sonship or, or co-heir, everybody that's in a different level of maturity and revelation is going to fight against the next. Right. So even though we're all in the same house, in the same, you know, spirit of the Lord that it, it's, you don't have that revelation yet. And so I think so many in the church, if you're in a, a more of a bond servant slavery mentality, sonship is so radical. It, it, it is heretical in, yeah. in many uh, ideas, but it's really a maturity level. And so I think that's where yeah. we see that. And it's, it's helpful for me to kind of understand that, uh, and that no, no, we're all still part of the body. They just, they're not at a, at a revelation yet uh, of that freedom. And it's not that I'm better or worse than them. It's just a, a maturity in, in the spirit and in just that understanding of the freedom that we really have. And that for me, at least it helps me go back and, and love them a little bit easier. Uh, but that's tough. I mean, it's, you know, as I know, Derek knows as well, and every probably every every one of us on this on this call is that it's hard to go back and love and truly love those who have really persecuted us. I mean, that's a that's a maturity in and of itself to go and to do that. And often it is the church, and it is it's the ones who are closest to us, just like we saw with Jesus. It's the ones that are closest to us that hurt the most. But oh, yet, yeah. Jesus calls us to number one, go deeper into identity. Cause I can't forgive <laughs> and come back into that without identity because I'm still upset. Right. But he is, he calls us to go do that hard inner work. I think the toughest thing that I've run into personally that I, that I struggle with is um, not so much that I necessarily would get persecuted by somebody else. Cause you know, that comes out through the internet and stuff, but but like you said, the ones that are close to you or have been close to you. Yeah. And when my heart is to bless them, encourage them to do what they're called to do, 
yet they're not able to reciprocate. And, you know, so that's actually another level of maturity is that getting to that place of understanding that not everybody's at the same level of maturity. Oh, and I'm okay. sure I'm immature in some areas where others are a lot more mature, but, but just that I would be able to bless them even though they can't bless me. And that's, Man. that's part of what, you know, walking this walk is about well, anyways. We need to bless those who don't bless us. I don't, I don't think Jesus's heart changed for Judas. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and they right. were sitting at the dinner table. He said, look, I love you all, but one of you is a deceiver. And 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 I don't mm. think he was like, hey, watch out for Judas. Let's get him out of here. Like, that's really like the heart we try to walk in. It gets us in trouble. It got Jesus in a lot of trouble. You really. the heresy hunter? Yeah. Yeah. It, you know what I'm saying? It gets us in trouble, but it got Jesus in a lot of trouble, you know, took him to the cross, you know, his <laughs> betrayer. But um, his heart for for Judas, you know what I'm saying? His heart for his enemies and for those who are literally yeah. in their midst trying to overthrow them and trying to he they yeah. like Judas wanted his platform. He seen the money that came with it, and he wanted right. it. You know, and we deal with those people all the time, man. We have to pray for them and bless them. Those are our enemies, and because I mean, God allows them. God allowed the Judas thing to happen. That didn't catch God or Jesus by surprise, right? They knew right. that was there, yeah. and he knew how to respond. With Absolutely. love, yeah. yeah. Good. Well, whenever died, anybody asks me, him, why like, do you follow little. God? I just don't spend it for the money. <laughs> just for <laughs> <see> my <laughs> just for the money. Why are you as a Christian? <laughs> no, but you do get you do get money. You will get you'll get more family. You forsake your family, you get more family, more um, wealth, but also persecution. So I yeah. just all of you guys getting persecuted. That just makes me trust you more. You know. Mm. And this is not a quest. This is not a, a commercial for Hawaii real estate. I'm just standing here, to walk down my office. But everything no, I'm thinking, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> I have no, I have no like wisdom to speak of. Like I'm just honored that you guys would keep inviting me on here when I'm like such a mess. But it's like that's another gift is like to have friends like you guys, and and I think a lot of our audience is there are people that have gifts that have miracles and I would really recommend that they chime in and share them. And we're looking for more uh, leaders. It's, it's a desperate fight and we need more uh, warriors and people who will uh, receive that new revelation or step into that new thing. You know, I want it. I want to see what Mike Parsons has and Martin Smith and Karina and, if Derek suddenly has this totally crazy out there new thing or Berlin or Gil or Karen, like, I want that. I like it. You know, <laughs> I just, I'm all in it for the money, you guys. I want all of it. Yeah. So you well, guys are Michael, gonna I just want to encourage you that you do have a lot to share. I love Absolutely. the way that you are constantly bringing us back to the Bible, constantly back, coming back to reading the Bible, spending that time, giving yeah. us um, other options for research and listen to this guy and let's read this you know, book or whatever. So you do have a lot to bring to the table and I love that you do it and I love your consistency. So just that in and of itself is, is meaningful and it's taking territory. So thank and I, I, I want to honor you too, Michael, because I've said this before, but you know, this right here, what's happening right now would not be happening if it weren't for you. Absolutely. Because you were the one that got uh, got me inspired to actually start doing some type of talk show. You introduced me to Martin. You introduced me to Truth Seeker. You know, yeah. Berlin and, and Karen and I, we wouldn't be on here right now if it wasn't for you. So God is Absolutely. using you in mighty, powerful ways that you're not even uh, – I don't think you're tapped into or even understand what he's doing, which might be good. <laughs> I have no idea, guys. I'm so proud of all of you guys. Every time I see any of you go live and I don't even watch it, sometimes I've got a million other things happening here, but it is an honor to be able to meet great Christians. It says in the Bible, you know, the saints in the earth who in who are all my delight. So it's just like, yes, another Avenger. Yes, another warrior. <laughs> Nights of the round I get table. Tired. Right. Get everybody. Yeah, as long as you don't believe in life, and as long as you believe in angels, and as long as you believe in. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I Very think. Proud. 
I, I thank you very much. And I think that um, all of us need to get together, obviously not live uh, online until, well, maybe God will show us that we're supposed to do it. But I think that we Wait, we're need live? <laughs> we need to go have spiritual journeys together so that we can start um, making those connections together, you know, in the heavenlies together and creating a, a, a reference point for moving forward and moving the mission on earth that we're doing here forward from that heavenly perspective. Yeah, together. absolutely. We actually I'm, talked about that Berlin a little bit before, before you actually got on and it would yeah. be something I'd like to talk to once we're offline again, talk about it a little bit right. more. But I would just want to encourage the the listeners to or watchers to make sure that you are with like minded people and yeah. having those experiences together because <laughs> as an ecclesia, the whole point of it is to bring heaven to earth. And the only way you can do that is to go see what heaven is doing. Right? right. And then do it here on earth and understand the strategies for what that looks like. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I'm involved in, in several different ecclesias, but we just started one that is a super, um, like is we call ourselves Delta force because we're undercover kind of stuff. And we, we're not, but we just have a mandate that we're not going to talk about what we do, but I can tell you that, even in our training sessions, much less our missions, it's amazing. Yes, I tell, I tell you, but I'd have to kill you. Right, exactly. Right? I'd have to put a spiritual cone of silence over you, <laughs> or send you to the next realm. Right. <laughs> Take a vow of silence. That's right. it sounds like the Freemasons to me. That's right. Oh. <laughs> the Christian <laughs> That's right. No, but but Derek, here's the difference is that when we are allowed to, we'll let you know. And then also what we're doing is going to have impact here on earth that will be seen. And so it's gonna be like, wow, I wonder how that happened. And we just have to pretend we don't know, even yeah. though we orchestrated it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, and so God gets the credit. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Absolutely. I think that's a great idea. And anybody listening to, I would recommend um, just take whatever steps you have. Like people have that inspiration. We're all artists and we all have different um, abilities of creation. And if you feel your spirit is like, hmm, I kind of feel like going here today, as long as it's not sin or evil. And as long as you have the faith for it, go and try it. You know, use that workout machine instead of that one. You know, if you feel... And I'm yeah. telling you, like, we're all going to find each other. You know, there's a, a whole laundry list of people that I'm meeting now who <laughs> love to travel in the spirit. And they're just normal people, but they yeah. love the spirit. And we're all meeting each other. And it's so exciting. And then you'll get dreams that confirm it. Like, I have some friends, including Martin, who it's like, I've literally had dreams that confirm things that he just talked about in his show so there's other there's got to be more people out there that are doing this probably a lot of them are listening they might not be out there on social media and um we need more we need more recruits you know and in the spirit Absolutely. you don't even have to have a youtube show or whatever you can just start you yeah know, God watches you. You know, he watches your show i want to encourage you if you're just learning about this Two, two ways to get in. If you're learning about it and you want to learn more and track with moving forward, or if you want to get in an Ecclesia group who, who learns together and, and activates together, make sure that you go to ultimate impact movement.com right yeah ultimate impact movement.com uh, ultimate impact movement.com and get uh, yourself into that course and get yourself into an ecclesia and that you know is growing we we kind of launched that at the beginning of the year and you know kind of spent a couple months getting that going but uh in the last six months you know we've got now over 160 people that are that are in this and it's really growing rapidly um, as people are getting into it and understanding what it's doing, because it is teaching the foundation, it's forming ecclesias, and that's, I believe, what the mandate is that we were supposed to be doing for the last 2,000 years, is going into the heavens, see what Father's doing, bringing it down, declaring it, decreeing it into the earth. And um, there's, a, there's a, lot, a lot more to that, but that is the gist of it, and we need to learn how to do that. Yeah. Absolutely.
I don't know how you guys get the energy. I get all the notifications of all this <laughs> that you're doing the emails and I wish to be a part of it. And it's just like, Ooh, man, <laughs> so I'm so excited to see what God does. You guys that are watching uh, a link for the ultimate impacts is listed in the uh, notes here. Karen, you're so awesome, man. <laughs> you're doing all the stuff that we can't do. I don't know how. <laughs> I don't have time. <laughs> you know, I, I, I still, you know, we've talked about this, so I'm just going to talk about it out in the open here. Um, you know, doing a conference, an online conference where each one of us brings something, whether it's one or two hours, and we actually do a teaching on what we know and what the fathers put on our heart and that we would do, you know, it might be a two or three day conference with breaks like you would have just at a regular conference, but uh, you know, have one to two hour sessions, maybe even bring in some worship music or I, I don't know what we'll to talk about it, but uh, would be curious. So anybody who's listening, put some comments in whether it's YouTube or Facebook, let us know if you'd be interested. Uh, you know, a couple other people that aren't on here right now that would be on there with us would be Karina. She was on here earlier uh, Chris Carter, he's not able to make it because of the time right now, but, uh, uh, and Daniel Lovett was on here as well, but that we would each come on and share some of uh, the specific things that we're teaching. Cause almost, I believe each and every one of us have a specific ministry and or message that the father's given to us and for us to be able to share that. And again, it's not that we're better than anybody else. It's just, this is the mandate that he's given to us to, you know, fulfill and put it out there. So uh, let us know if you'd be interested in that. That would be good to know. Yeah. Because if we don't hear anything, then the, we, there's no reason to waste our time, right? <laughs> right. Because, yeah, putting on a video summit or an in online summit is is a lot of work <clears throat> and it's a lot of coordination. So, yeah, if you guys are interested, we are interested in doing it for you, but we don't want to play to crickets. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's important for us to get the message out there to people who really need it and want to hear it. So, yeah. People are already saying that they're interested. What was that? that? Uh, people are already saying that they're interested in the chat. Right All on. Right. Excellent. Awesome. I see those hands out there. I see, see <laughs> you. <laughs> Come on, I see, I see you. Michael. The, the little guy in the back. The little guy, not, he's not a midget. He, he's not a midget. <laughs> Do you remember that stream? We watched that on the School of the Mystics uh, a couple weeks ago. There was a guy doing an uh, altar call at the end, and they got the music playing. He's like, raise your hand. I see you. I see you, young man in the back. I see you, little guy in the back. And the camera's on him, but you can't see the people. He said, I see you, little guy in the back. And he like pauses like, he's a little guy like... He's, he's not a midget. He's a little guy like a like a child. Uh, he's like, well, I didn't want anyone to think I was offending a midget. It was, and it got really, really oh, awkward after man. he said that. They got the oh, you know, no. It's hilarious. Oh, no. But after trying to bring that back to the spirit moving, it was very hard. <laughs> it's that old foot and mouth disease, yeah, man. I see you, I see you little guy yeah. in the back. Uh, he's, a, he's a little guy. He's not a midget. <laughs> <laughs> just went with it he should have been like i know this is awkward okay whatever you know He's like, like oh, you gotta just roll with it it's hilarious it's yeah. a funny video though but, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay well, so let's do a final shout out of what's going on currently in your world what do you think and karen hasn't spoken in a while what's going on with you girlfriend <laughs> well i mean you know y'all are all talking <laughs> y'all won't let her talk <laughs> i know <laughs> He's like, ah, ah. yeah, <laughs> that's okay. I I'll get a word in uh, sooner. Or later. <laughs> so, anyway, um, and on on my ground, um, you know, of course, we have the band, the uh, Elastic Army Band, and um, I'm going to start doing a weekly broadcast with my people and having them on, and probably some guests because I like to draw the unknowns. <laughs> And we were just talking about that today. So my yeah. head is just going, ah, you know, and um, so that's where that's what we're going to start doing shortly. <laughs> awesome. Good. Good. I did one test run and uh, see the, the, mechanic, the mechanics are working. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. It's good. Cool. Yeah. Anything else? I mean, you got any concerts going on? Uh, 
Um, no, um, not right now. Um, we've got some, uh, a new member and we're trying to get him, uh, you know, he's a drummer and we're trying to get him, um, up to par with us and learn our music. We have, uh, 20 songs. I've got some more that are written and we need to develop those. <laughs> so are you going to be at the con the conference in Moravian Falls in, uh, in November, his mountain, my mountain? No, I I'm not. Okay. <laughs> I'm going right. you know, I'm to be there. I'm going to be yeah. there. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm going to be presenting Falls. on Spirit Center Business, so it'll be cool. Yeah, y'all are going to love Moravian. I had a friend that went there. I mean, a lot of angel activity and stuff going on. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah, so Dean and I will be there. Yeah. Berlin will be there. I'd love I mean, to see yeah. you guys there. It'd be awesome. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, you know, I'm supposed to go um, to Nashville in October for the Ian Clayton with Karina and them, so... <laughs> Yeah, I good, was supposed good. to go to that. It's like, ah, oh, nah, nah. shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> no excuses. In, in October. Come you to what? Sacramento area. <laughs> hey, uh, well, um, yeah, so who's next? Martin? Sure. I think, you know, for me right now, um, it's really pushing into more of the, you know, how to move from sonship really into a co air. And I was telling, I think some of you guys earlier that, you know, I feel like I'm kind of in that middle of the sonship maturity, but, but being drawn towards the co-air and I don't, to be honest, I don't have a real good uh, grasp or, or framework yet for the co-air relationship. And so, and I, and I, I'm okay with that, but I'm drawn towards it, you know, which is, uh, I think a good thing. Uh, but we've, I'm, uh, teaching at a conference, uh, men's conference coming up here in October, October 4th weekend. Uh, it's called the you know, identity crisis is the whole, the whole weekend of it. So I'm just, I'm honored to speak with that, uh, through a ministry called free indeed it really is, is breaking off, not just addiction, but it's all about identity and getting us deeper into that, which is just huge. Um, well, I want to encourage you and, and you too, Karen, whatever you do have going on, put it in the notes of the Christ consciousness and Ecclesia arising, put it okay. in the uh, comment section so that yeah. we have that. And even in uh, on the YouTube section so people can find it. If you have, okay. you know, want to encourage people to go to those things. Yep. Definitely. Okay. Cool. Yep. And then, yeah. And then we meet, you know, we're just meeting every, every Monday night as, as men. Uh, and that's just continuing to, to grow and to be really, just great. I mean, I love, I love that physical meeting as well with the fellas yeah. and then meet as, with the youth, uh, on Saturday nights, we do worship set that's live. And then just following that we do, uh, meet with the youth that man, the, the youth get this stuff faster than, than yeah. I ever can. And, uh, it's just amazing to watch them come into identity. So I'm like, dang, if I was 15, 16 years old, learning about actual identity and flowing and, and talking with the father directly. Whew, I don't know where I'd be now, you know, know. At, uh, mid forties. So yeah, That's so the I'm, right there. I'm excited yeah. watching these kids just, just catch, catch identity and, and cause they're going to move faster into co-air uh, yeah. than, than yeah. I'll be able to most likely. And that's, that's exciting. So. I it's would maybe time. offline uh, like to talk to you about that because I know we're kind of wrapping up here because we didn't get to discuss that live here, but would love to talk more about, the mature maturing sons and co-heirs or kings and so forth yeah absolutely well, we need to have martin back on again so we can do yeah. that yeah yeah we might yeah that'd be good we're yeah. that's a whole other thing okay who's next <laughs> was that Brian. everything martin yeah yeah that's Brian. Brian. <laughs> michael yeah well i can tell you a lot of physical things that are happening right now and, and bore you guys but um I feel like there's something happening in the spirit that is at least personally God is challenging me to just get back into the weird, crazy, wild, like as weird as it gets and then go further type stuff. And so that's pretty much what I'm going to endeavor to do is just keep diving into that and I'll get be with sharing me. a lot of on, uh, spirit work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man, let's do it. Oh, you know, Michael, you know, I can't wait things. till you, I, I can't wait to wait till you launch your training because you really do have a lot of brilliance inside of you that needs to be packaged in a way that people can, can get it. So when you're ready, I'm ready to help you. So I want we'll to encourage you. Yeah, I would love to, if anybody has, you know, um, any questions and they, they want to schedule, um, I would love to start to 
work with people and um, not as some kind of guru guy, but like I've been around the world a little bit and spirit mm-hmm. world. I've seen, I've seen things <laughs> and uh, we're, we're going to be moving very soon. There's a lot of miracles that are happening here in Hawaii. Um, we're getting our real estate licenses and it's just been everything. And babies. Does that fit in the miracle the category? I'm sorry? You said you're getting your real estate license right after you said there were a lot of miracles happening. <laughs> Um, yeah, that, the miracle will be actually passing the exam. I didn't study. Uh, I'm just going to pray about it. And, uh... That's right. <laughs> <laughs> How I feel. There yeah, is a real brother. estate angel, right, that will help you write the exam. <laughs> well, mostly, like, I have to spiritualize everything. So it's like, okay, well, what does it say in the Bible about deeds and titles <laughs> and the, the measuring life and all these, these new things? I'm totally new to it. But it makes me think about the Bible a lot more. Like, what are what are we actually doing? We're getting people signed up. We're uh, we're agents for the New Jerusalem. We're getting your the deed to your mansion in heaven secured. And then you know, once you sign up with Jesus, you know, you're you're set. And then we get a, nice. we get an agent commission. You know, <laughs> Jesus <laughs> is like, here's five percent. It's uh, yeah, it's twelve million interdimensional uh, spaceship <laughs> coin. Interdimensional credits. Fate, I call them fate bucks because currency of heaven is fate. Right. Isn't but there yeah, a new coin called fun. Ether Coin? Like Ether? Is there yeah, a new, new Bitcoin called Ether currency. <laughs> yeah. it's not, we should copyright it, Derek. That's a great. I think, idea. It, I think it's already a thing. <laughs> oh, man, we're gonna get right. fate bucks. It's gonna be my crypto. All right, next, awesome. you guys. Uh, Derek. Oh, so for me, um, you know, consistency is key in anything that we're doing. Um, so I'm trying to be consistent, trying to show up, continue with the, it's kind of hard with the internet and, uh, I know. you know, so we're trying to find ways to uh, work with it or work around it or whatever. So that's really big on my plate right now. It's been for months actually. And I'm um, just trying to get a work or work around that. But as far as what I'm bringing out, um, obviously we do our Thursday night school of the mystics, Sunday morning seer class. It's for all the Patreon supporters. Um, let's see. Uh, I've been writing a lot for this book that I've been writing for a while. I'm trying to wrestle and, and pray about what I should put in there. Cause as I j- journey one down one road, it's like, okay, you know, this is a book we're headed down. It's like, Oh man. So, but I want something big. I told Berlin, like, there's books it's going to be like books within books so like i'm trying to just it's a whole umbrella of like my work and encounters Mm -hmm. and so as i give one encounter i'm like i don't know if i should put that encounter and not add all the other encounters you know what i'm saying do a series that uh, that'll be more easily read is in a in a, a series of smaller books yeah because every subject that i'm touching on could be a book in itself like whether it's like angelic contact whether it's you know, stargazing or whatever the case is. But um, yeah. so anyway, I'm I'm working on that as well as we have the um, uh, conference coming up, the Christ Consciousness Conference that we're putting yeah. on here in Mobile, um, September the 14th. Um, I'm going to be speaking, doing music as well. Buddy of mine, Justin Caldwell, he's going to be uh, doing music and uh, leading prophetic worship. And, uh, no, I just want to say on that, Derek, that I, I don't know why, but for whatever reason, I've been somewhat compelled to try to get there. I don't know if I can, but I. It's a lot I'm cheaper than, than many it. of the other conferences. <laughs> it's twenty five. Well, I bucks. just I, I don't know. Seriously, there's something that that is uh, just stirring in me to come come to that. I, I just want to I want to see you in person. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that I just would wanna, be cool. Yeah, so if if I can, if well, you know, it's going to be a matter of uh, Father's already put it on my heart, so I have to just look for the provision if if that's meant to happen. Yeah, would it's love going to be, be good. There. It's going to be good. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and really what, what else, is Derek? Uh, did we lose Derek? Oh, he's frozen. I'm frozen on y'all's end. You can't freeze during there your you promo. Still hear him. I'm frozen on y'all's end, but is, on my on my end, I'm recording yes, good. I think that I'm is recording such a faux pas to freeze during your promo. Right. Um, yeah, so, so go ahead, Derek. We yeah, can I want to plug the other guy, uh, Joshua Fluman, who is uh, who's going to be uh, speaking as well. We're going to be speaking about dream interpretation, and he's going to—I I believe he's going to be here with us soon with the next stagers. He's going to be uh, part of this 
this group too. Joshua Fluman and most likely Adam Starseed will be here with us as well. I'm giving shouts out to those guys. But uh, yeah, September the 14th, man, we're going get to get it in. I'm going to be talking about sound healing, light healing, vibration, you know, all of the fun stuff, uh, music, and then we're going to just practice it. We're going to do some... Uh, uh you know sound healing getting and then tapping into the presence of god through through prayer and worship and loving on jesus so we got a bunch of people traveling from all over who are going to be here and uh it's going to be a good time of fellowship and uh like the tickets are 25 dollars to register uh it's in mobile alabama for those of you don't who don't know you can go to christ-consciousness.com to get the info there or you can go to truthseeker.com all the info is there 25 dollars tickets i'd love to see you guys we're going to have dinner together and all that good stuff. So anyway, that's what I'm bringing to the table within the next month or so. So next. Awesome. Awesome. And you awesome. also have meditations and music that people can get now. Right. Oh, right? Yeah. Tons of stuff. Yeah, I got med- meditations available at truthseeker.com. Uh, just put mm-hmm. out, we did two of them recently. I did the, um, um, seeing Jesus, which is the, the, uh, encountering Jesus, the, the hymn of his garment guided meditation, yeah. Um, did that one and then the recent one I did which is a little bit different but this is the uh, I called it the Heavenly Father Mother Earth guided meditation where you uh, connect with the Heavenly Father then don't forget your mother don't forget where you came from people and um, to, to literally ground and to go into the spirit of the inner earth and go to the bedrock and, and encounter your your earthly mother and so uh, grounding in and of itself is is powerful putting your feet on the ground and taking literally taking your shoes off and grounding releasing connecting that way um but this is a meditation that kind of leads you through that process as well to just combine heaven and earth together on earth as it is in heaven it's a mirror image of of both so you can't have one without the other so all that's available at truthseeker.com hey and um his other um thing he recorded the lost books uh video you did <laughs> that's awesome thank you i mean i've shared that a lot and i go oh, well, I to oh. oh yeah it's awesome <laughs> yeah it's just uh just a little teaching on some of the information i got years ago just the lost books of the bible that not that are like or just i mean there's tons of them you know, people that claim that these books are legit, but these are the books that are actually mentioned in the Bible where the Bible yeah. quotes them. Let's like, as it is written in the book of Shemaiah, the prophet or Edu, the seer or whatever the case is, it's like, who are these people? So kind of give a biblical breakdown of where they're mentioned in the Bible. And there's like yeah. 20, 30 of them. And so when somebody says, where's that in the Bible? He took care of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. That's awesome. I'm going to have to get that. Enoch, yeah, you know, yeah, most of us know the, the Enoch stuff and it's mentioned yeah. of and then Jasher. But there's a whole bunch more that we have never even heard uh, of. Yeah. yeah. So. That's good. I'll have to look that one up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, Berlin, you going next or am I? Why don't you go ahead? Uh, okay. Yeah. So um, I'm traveling and so I've got a lot of life stuff going on but i'm writing my next book and it's it's going to be about your business destiny and derek i hope that you will do the cover for me i don't know if you can or not but we'll see anyway um so i have that coming up we're still going forward with the uh spirit centered business membership we meet every first and third thursday and actually do an activation and a spirit walk together to find out what father has for our businesses. And that's been going really well. We've had some great breakthrough and some really cool (laughs) stuff happen during those. So uh, you can always go to spirit centered business and click on the membership button there to go there. It's on, it's a Patreon account. So you can also find me on Patreon with spirit centered business, but um, that's coming up. We're, we're going to be launching the podcast again. It was, I've got a hundred episodes in the can, but I'm rebranding and then doing some live stuff. And so, or not live, but new um, interview type stuff. So that's going to come on to the Kingdom Talks channel after I get done with all of my traveling in mid-October sometime in that in that time frame. So I'm excited about what God's doing in people's businesses. And I really believe that we're supposed to be um, engaging in a bigger a bigger mandate and not necessarily 
relying on having a job, right? Relying on someone else's platform. We need to create our own and what God told us. Now, not everybody is cut out to be an entrepreneur. Obviously, I'm not talking to everybody. But if you've been called and you have this little feeling, well, I should start this or I should do this, or even as a side thingy, everyone has amazing brilliance and experience and expertise and a message to share that you could get out there in some monetized form. So I just want to encourage all of you that you can have a spirit centered business. Amen. Good, good, good. All right. So uh, some of you are looking at this through, uh, I'm going to say our eyes, kingdom talk size. So you're seeing our logo. Uh, yeah. Derek's got his going as well, or I guess you, you weren't able to get that going. We got to get up. your internet fixed. We got to get your internet fixed. <laughs> so we're praying with you on that. And if there's anything physically we can do, let us know. Um, Anyway, so, you know, for Adina and I, our main thing that uh, two, two main things, Kingdom Equipping Center, but that's local. It's a local expression. But then uh, uh, the UIM, which is the ultimate impact, uh, that is our main message that the Father's given to us. And again, it's all about laying a foundation for people who are curious, interested. They have to be hungry because if they're not hungry, they're just going to poo poo the whole thing the whole time because you know, they, they carry that religious spirit. So if you're hungry and you're looking for more of God, then this would be for you to step in. If, you know, I, I was a skeptic, so it was hard for me to look at some of this stuff. But um, but so we put it in a format that we feel is is easy to understand. They're 10 to 15 minute teachings a day. And uh, and then at the end of the week, you get together as a group, you discuss it and and you activate. So that's what we're doing. We've got over 100 teachings on there right now. And it's uh, going really well. Um, we've got quite a few people on there, and uh, it's uh, it's expanding pretty pretty rapidly. So that's that's our main thing. That's the, really the mandate and message that the fathers put on our heart to, to get out there. So with that, we're also now looking at and considering. We put it out there last Friday. The idea of doing mini retreats, where we may just start as we're you know we travel quite a bit, and while we're in the middle of these, that we would start doing mini retreats at you know, like a Airbnb and have 10 to 15 people that would come together. And we actually do life together. We do some of the next age things mm -hmm. together and we, you know, so it'd be light on the teaching, heavy on the activation. So that's nice. something we're, we're starting to put together. Um, also want to make sure that if you haven't heard, Chris Carter is coming here in October. So October 17, 18, 19 and 20, that's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And it's going to be three nights and four days at an Airbnb. So we are going to be doing this mini retreat, although we're going to have uh, probably this close to... This is a to, real full-on retreat. Yeah, Not it's many. a full-on retreat and uh, with a conference at the same time. But there's going to be about 30 people that will be able to stay at the place and just have fun. Chris loves to have fun. Um, just get to know him, you know, at a heart-to-heart -heart level. And... We have about five or six spots left for the retreat, so not not a lot of, not a lot not a lot left there. So if you want to do that, definitely need to uh, uh, go to our website kingdomtalksmedia.com and sign up for that. Um, what else is there? Oh, and then plus we're also going to be uh, doing the, the planetarium, which we call the VIP. And Chris, for Friday night, we're going to go down and spend two hours at a planetarium where Chris is going to get to tell us about the stars and show us you know, what he's been talking about and he's looking forward to that. This will be the first time this, this is going to happen. So we're excited about that. Yeah. Um, and then I just, I just want to throw this out there. You know, Sunday night I gave uh, my testimony. I'm getting set free of depression and other tools of the enemy. Uh, I just encourage you to go take a look at that. If you've struggled with any of that to just see what I did. And I, I explain, explain in there that, hey, these are the tools I use. They work for me. Doesn't mean that they're going to work for you, but I'm pretty passionate about it. And they have worked for a lot of other people. So just take a look at that if you get a chance. That's on uh, Kingdom Equipping Center YouTube channel. And you can uh, get that information. Uh, it's under the uh, King Sunday Nights uh, playlist. And then again, kingdomtalksmedia.com. Go there if you want to see what's going on. We're building that out. Berlin's doing an awesome job working on that. Uh, getting getting a lot of that done, but um, eventually we want to have channels there that would you know if, if we haven't talked about it, Derek, but would love to have your show featured there. Would love to have Fringe Radios featured there, and, friend, 
and uh, flying, flying penguins, penguins and, and the spirit and the Army. Just, everybody having their channel uh, and there'd be others that would come on as well but basically have that be a kind of a go-to place to find all these different next age people that are sharing and talking and uh, that they'd be able to find you there so that's I think that's it did I miss anything no, I think we should do a group selfie. Karen, you want to take a picture of all of us? A planned <laughs> selfie. Got the feet. Oh, oh, come on. Don't be come posting no crazy right? selfies of me on that, man. <laughs> well, we got, yeah, we got the one with the angel wings. That's what I'm going to yeah. call it, angel wings. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Everybody ready? Selfie mode. Selfie mode. Selfie mode. There you go. <laughs> All right. You saw it right here live, everybody. Let me be prepared. <laughs> selfie for it. of the selfie. I like it. All right. So hopefully All right. We'll Actually, it's an through. Ussie, right? It's an Ussie because we're Ussie. united. <laughs> uh, new new word coined. Yeah. It's an Ussie. Well, it's better than a wee. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's All right. Well. Wee. Um, th thanks everybody for hanging out with us whether you're listening to this live or listening to this on the podcast end as well make sure you check out uh, everybody's work because this is a group of people that I really feel strongly about and uh, these are my peeps and if you're looking for some cool mm -hmm. peeps definitely check out each uh, one and what they bring to the table uh, individually and this is what we do collectively as well so make sure y'all check them out and so thank you guys for hanging out with us True Seeker Podcast and everybody else broadcasting on their platforms as well God bless you, oh. and we'll do it again very soon. Peace, peace. Can I can I do one more favor? Sure. Okay, I need help getting subscribers on my YouTube channel because I can't change the name until I have a hundred. So please <laughs> go to go to my YouTube channel and change, help me change that. Name. Thank you. Change the name. I couldn't understand. Well, yeah. <laughs> the Lynn Newby, you want to change to to spirit? I mean, it's message mosaic. <laughs> right now oh, and I want it to be, right. okay. exactly which is my training company and i want it to be berlin i'm sorry to take up your ending you did no, an awesome cool. ending people know what to do i'm just ending don't worry he's just gonna cut that off i'm ending it on my side god bless